Welcome to another episode of the Cheat Coders Podcast. My name is Raph. This is episode number 268. And I am here with my usual suspects. The one in his tucking shirt era. <laughs> He's been tucking every shirt and cutting all the sleeves. <laughs> So everyone can see his thighs, his his legs, as well as his arms. Is Mister Don doing stuff? What's doing? Hey, if you look closer, you can see his knee through his um, rips, ripped jeans. And that's not fashion. Sex, that sexy. was just from him doing squats. So be careful of that. <laughs> and then we have also <laughs> the most popular guy in the podcast. You wonder why we keep him around. And you know he's the one that sticks out the most and gets all the praise, Mister Nats Blazing. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mabu Hi. Thank you. <laughs> and we have the sexiest guy on the podcast right here, Yee. besides hey. myself, and our guest, of course, is Mister Christian Garcia, hey. the Wild Thor. Wow, wow, wow. Hey. Hey. So sexy that we got Rihanna to specifically sing that song yeah, for she the wrote tag. It about Garcia. And it is a special episode because we have a special guest. Special. And we were at his show yesterday, Ooh. and it was it was crazy just to see this. And because like we saw him on social media, mm. blowing up, see his snippets, and then see see his whole show on the internet, and then seeing him live. It's kind of like we just saw you saw the blossom of your career in in the in the span of the last few years mm. and now it's just crazy to see you yeah. right in the studio so we could talk to you about your amazing journey around the world and everything we got comedian funny guy mr ron just saw thank you brothers thank for having me man thank for hey. coming to the show that was dope of yeah course, man. man of course and, and, and I knew that, like, I knew beforehand because I've seen your, like, snippets and stuff that you love denim. Yeah. That's kind of, like, your thing. So, and then you mentioned that you liked my denim jacket yesterday. Yeah. So, we put it at the background in the forefront just in case you um, <laughs> want to place a, place a bid. Well, I like what you're wearing now. And, right. and then I brought my secondary one right here. I think so. I like that more. Hey, there you go. Yeah. So, <laughs> one of these ones are going to be b belonging to Ron Gisol, and I'm going to see it on on Instagram. And be like, yo, oh, that's, yeah. that's my jacket there. You asking him to make a bid, bro. He's going to roll you after this. He's just going to take your money. He's going to give me that jacket. I know. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's Canadian. He's, they have, they are like a stereotypical type of where to be very polite. So he probably Filipinos are polite and Canadians are polite. Two together yeah. is not good. Oh, okay. So cancels each other out. So yeah, now polite. I'm an asshole. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. now he's gonna roll Double me. And he's gonna run away saying thank you. Yeah, yeah. He's like, thank you for the jacket. No man. <laughs> so how you been? How's the how's the um, trip in Australia been so far? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, I've been coming out here for like maybe f 15 years. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I have cousins that live out mm. here too. So shout outs. Yeah. Uh, May. Boom boom boom. Hey. And, and, there we go. <laughs> and uh, play the comedy store okay, at yeah, Sydney. Yeah. And then uh, some of the other comedy uh, clubs around Australia. So in Brisbane, I was doing the sit down. And then in Perth, I was doing comedy lounge. So mm. I'm pretty familiar with um, the comedy scene in Australia uh, now. That's nice. good. Yeah. Because you got, you got one of the um, up and coming comedians right next to you. Nice. Why are you going to do that, man? He, he does you know comedy now? I, I, I started, I did a little bit of stand up com uh, comedy. But That's like, dope. I haven't done it for. for Tell for us a, a joke, Don. <laughs> How long have you been doing it for? Show us a joke. Um, I probably started. Make him laugh, bro. A little before COVID. <laughs> right. Um, but then I haven't done any proper gigs since then. Actually, last night, Marty was like, do you want five minutes? I'm like, no, 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 no. Hey, man, yeah. next time, man. Try yeah. it. No, honestly, next time, we, if, you're, do if you're down. I might pick it up. Because you know, watching watching you, watching Riven, watching uh, Eski, and even Marty go up there and, and you know, do your thing up there, it was, it was inspiring to see. So mm. it made me like think, of like, man, maybe I should get back. You should. Back. I mean, yeah. honestly, if you put you in a sweet spot, you'll be fine. Five minutes, you'll be fine. Yeah. So next Thanks, time. Sure. This time Ooh. next year, maybe. Yeah, let's let's do this thing called manifestation, and we're gonna manifest Don 
<laughs> opening act for Ron Gisol next oh, like year. We're going to make it happen. Yeah, we're going to make uh, it happen. No, I just have to say yes. You don't have to manifest nothing. <laughs> 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 it's it's so just too much mind <laughs> 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 using your mind. Cool, just yeah. use my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> cool, yeah. cool, yeah, Ron, can I? <laughs> I have chicharron for you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Kuya. Cool, yeah, there's chicharron there. Oh, nice. <laughs> this is a vegan chicharron. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Wow, that's, that's that, that, obviously that, Don chose it because he's the fit guy. <laughs> he was like, you know, I, it's Chicharron, but we need to keep him healthy, type of thing, you know. Uh, it's all about healthy balance, and yeah. Filipino. Those two words do not mix. I know. <laughs> yeah, they've like been, they've been trying. <laughs> Filipino but it vegetarians doesn't work. is impossible. Yeah. Just, I've never heard of that <laughs> in my life. So, um, so with Sydney, and you've been here in and out for the last fifteen years. Um, is there anything? that's different in the comedy scene in Sydney that you've experienced experience here that's different to say the Canadian scene or US scene type of thing? Yeah, I mean, everything is a little different. Referencing, everybody talks about things that that's local. So some of the times when I watch the comedy in different countries, I don't understand it because I'm not, I'm not sure what the reference is or yeah. even their slang. Yeah. You know, Lyft or, you know, motorway, autoway is different from highway yeah so sometimes those kind of mess me up but the general humor is really the same everywhere you go because you watch comedy on online you learn from it i think before the internet it might have been a lot different but since the internet and t and everybody watches netflix and everybody sees comedy it we learn from what we see on tv yeah. uh or on the internet more yeah. so it's it's really the same i don't i don't find too anything too much di too different from what i do anymore yeah, like yeah. you've been how many countries already so far? I've been probably over sixty countries. Flex. Hey, there you go. Yeah. Nice. And I've been doing it for thirty years, so Flex. everything yeah. is just a blur. It, <laughs> like, has it been it, like because like with the internet and the social media like blowing like your account up? Has that made a difference in what you've been doing in the first place, or it's just yeah. like more like it not not much not much different than what you've been doing for the last thirty years? Well, here's the difference. It's like uh, so before. So a year ago, I was probably at 1,500 IG followers. Wow. And then a year, right when the viral video happened, in a month, I got 118,000, mm. right? Without even me doing anything, it just happened. Mm. And the difference was, in an average comic club in the US, I would make $300 a show for five shows. That's 1,500 bucks. Mm. And that's a standard pay across the board. Now, if you have a following, you can get a door deal. Okay. And with a door deal, you, you, you can make anything from 50% up. And so now, instead of making $1,500 a weekend, I'll do one show and sell 300 tickets and make half of that door, mm. which God is, damn. you know, Flex. anything from five to $10,000 right? a weekend. Shit. So that's yeah. how it changed. There you nice. go. Because you, you, you really can't ask for a door deal if you don't draw. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it's not even being famous. It's, uh, it's now it's more like YouTubers and. IG people and TikTok have an underground following. Mm. So if you bring them to the door, and the problem with them, the clubs now, they're trying to pretend I don't have a draw. Okay. So they're like, uh, uh, I'll be like, all right, so give me the door deal because there's 200 people that came to see me. No, they'd come no matter what. I go, they're all Filipinos. And like, <laughs> yeah, Filipinos love us. I'm oh, like, yeah. we're in Texas. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so they, they try to scam you and yeah, make yeah. you believe that you don't have a following. Because they don't want to pay the extra money. Yeah. Oh, right. So there's no promo codes at the door type of thing. Is like, you know, you, you put your, uh, that's like how would like influencers try to get with their marketing things. Like uh, if they use our promo code, that means they know that this audience came from us type of thing. There's nothing like that in the scene. Oh, you could. Like it all depends on the promoter. Okay. But to, to for 100% uh, guarantee, it would, I would have to promote my own show and rent my own venue mm. to show, to just make all that money. Okay. The problem with that is if you don't have, you'd have to pay money for a PR person yeah. mm. to kind of like comb the country, market the country uh, or the city. Mm. A comic club will, ever, will already have like 50,000 to 100,000 database. Yeah. Mm. So they just have to press a, a an email and people will find out if you're coming or not. And if you're a comedy fan, if you're a fan of comedy, you'd know who I am. Yeah. But if you're just a regular person, you only know who a star is. Yeah, mm. well. So it's hard to market um, a non-star, a non-famous person. I'm more of like an underground uh, following now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, but like th that's how it's changed now. So that the, the money has gotten better, but now the, the business is more, I have to be more, more conscious of the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah because people will start like, 
not you're not scamming but like try to use, yeah, yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty much, pretty much take, pretty much, yeah. take your wow. like following as in like oh as you said before oh, they, these are just like the normal form of following that we get yeah, and it's hard to measure it and not even just the white and black crowds it's more even Filipino um, uh, organizations will be mm. like oh um, can you do our event uh, uh, oh sure for sure so I'm thinking they'll probably pay me 5,000 2,000 mm. something like Oh, it's per pre because you need exposure. Oh, oh my God. God. You and still get that? Like yeah. the same and I'm, like, I'm already got exposure. I have 120,000 yeah. followers. Yeah. Oh, no, but it's not enough. <laughs> you're, you're not Joko yet. Oh, that leads me to another question. Like, how many people, like, you probably get that in the comments a lot. It's like, oh, look at this wannabe Joko type of thing. How often do you get that? And I, I, I mean, I don't get a wannabe Joko because I don't look like him. Mm. But. If you're a Filipino American comedian, yeah, in Philippines they naturally compare you to Joe Coy. Mm, yeah. Outside of it, no, because okay. it's kind of like they don't, we don't sound the same in America. Mm. But in the Philippines, they go, oh, they sound the same because yeah. our accent's the same. That's racist, mm. right? But outside, yeah, it's racist. It and is racist. Outside of Philippines, they yeah. don't, they really don't care. They're just like, oh, okay. well, you're different. You look different. First of all, Joe Coy is half weight. Yeah. They can see that. Mm. In 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 America, in Philippines, for some reason, they don't see that. Uh, they go because I speak it's the same kind of accent as Joe, mm. and I dress kind of like you know mainstream American. Mm. They go, oh, you guys are like the same. Yeah, yeah. They, Even though I'm not, because you ever go to the Philippines and they already know if you're from there or not. Yeah. yeah. Like, have you been to the Philippines? Yeah. Like, lately? Yeah. Like, you, it's it's, it's, it's a local vibe. Like, yeah. Like, I go to H and M, and without even speaking, some guy will be like, "What kind of what part of America you from?" I'm like, "How do you know?" Because your walk is very cocky. I'm like, "What?" <laughs> 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 like, they say our our walk in in the West mm. is more upright and our nose is high, oh, okay. and we have this confident walk where they go where you could just tell a little bit of how you walk what you're wearing yeah that you're from america or you're from the west yeah, yeah. Because no matter how much you try to like blend no. in yeah, yeah. like i could get out. a bowl cut mm. and they'll still be like you're american bowl cut <laughs> <laughs> american yeah because like i i feel like that's like every single country they have their own own bowl cut own fade own way yeah. they trim their beard yeah because the fade in the u.s is a mid to high in mm. the philippines it's the lowest fade is it it's the low okay. fade. it's not it's not high they don't have it like tight mm. You know, there's a the the they still enjoy the long hair. Mm. Yeah, you know. I tried to get a haircut in the Philippines, and the, the guy was like, "What would you want? You want to like shave the sides and just leave the top?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, that's what." We do. And where'd you get that beard? Yeah, how, how do I get one? <laughs> yeah, because most of them don't have beards. Yeah, yeah. Most of them don't. yeah. that's um that's one of the best things to do when you go back to Philippines, eh? Like getting a haircut because you get a massage. It's a different experience. Yeah, yeah. Like the I, I was telling these boys, I was there a couple of years ago, and um. I just wanted to zero out, like just shave everything off. Yeah. But they still had to wash my hair beforehand. Yeah. And then they put a hot <laughs> towel over my eyes. Oh, it's so hot. Started massaging my head. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I heard the guy. They go, "What about your bird?" Yeah. And I'm and like, "My bird? bird? No, no, no." I was like, "What's going on?" And then I lift the towel off my eyes, and he was pointing at my chin. <laughs> oh. My yeah. Bird. So uh, he thought I, I thought he was saying bird. Your bird. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. he was talking but about was my beard. <laughs> Yeah, did you just take it off I, your you belt? Hear me go, Zoop. <laughs> yeah, like, oh yeah, my bird. Well, I, well, I guess I need a. <laughs> it needs a hot towel. <laughs> it, it, you know, it needs how? It, it needs a, a fade. Yeah. A fade. It needs a ball fade. Need a low fade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Put more bush. Where America you from? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's funny because, like, yeah, like, the reason why Raf was bringing up the whole com comparison to Joe Coy, we get that a lot in the comments. Like, people call us Joe Coy wannabes. Well, like, we're, the we're haters. Just, we don't even know the accent. We're not even doing stand up. We're, we're just, not even doing stand up. We're doing well, like, yeah, it's, I think it's because he was the first. And yeah. it kind of like when Richard Pryor was the first comedian that was black, that yeah. was big. Like, not even Richard Pryor, I would say Bill Cosby. Yeah. When Richard, they would compare him to him. Mm. Yeah. Then they would compare uh, Eddie Murphy to Richard, and then they would compare, you know, the next guy to Eddie Murphy. Yeah. And then eventually, there's ten great black comedians Legendary. that Legends. are separated in style, so they do same. It's just natural. Uh, Neil Brennan, who was the creator of Chappelle's Show, mm. said it the best. In the eighties, they allowed one black superstar. Mm. In the nineties, they allowed two. Now there's five. Mm. We're we're going we're doing the same shit. 
Yeah. So right now it's Joe, and that's it. That's it. So they're gonna only compare every single comedian that's Filipino to him, until mm. there's two, three. Then they go. Now there's a separation, mm. and it's just a natural thing of comparing a star, a celebrity that has no competition. Mm. It's that's just natural, great. and they've every community probably done, went through that. Like mm. that was not white. Yeah, yeah. And, and at the end, the end of the day, like it's just with the natural progression, like being called a wannabe, could, you know, you could look at it and be like as a as a negative thing, mm -hmm. but like you know, you're aspiring to be like in that level of where Joe Koi is. Mm -hmm. and, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. So you know, if someone calls you like, hey, you want to want to be called Joe, Joe Koi, you can just flip it, and be like, hey, you know, I'm aspiring to be on that level as well, so we could like lift up the. The culture, the culture right. rather than yeah. just being like you know why do we have to have one superstar that that you know right for yeah. a country type of thing rather than we we should all be on that elevated stage yeah and i think that um there's a natural jealousy mm. uh even when joe so those joe was okay let's say if we start for filipino comedians there was a guy named andy bumata in the, four, the 60s mm. he was the first filipino american comedian and then it was rex Navarrete, hey. right and then it was joe coy uh, there were many Filipino comics that were wow. still doing it, but never got famous. And when Joe Coy came out, um, after that, it was more like all of us were all his friends. They're like He was kind of a kuya. Mm. And he was a guy who was like, yo, we got to show the world we're Filipino. Let's do this. So it was me, Joey Gila, um, yeah. Edwin San Juan, and a oh, couple Edwin. other guys yeah. that were kind of like with Joe. And then when Joe took off, the jealousy was there, but then you were like, you know what? This is our people. This is our culture. Yeah. Yeah. And you kind of just fucking f don't care about it anymore. Yeah. Mm. Jealousy is just a natural human emotion yeah. that, uh, that you have that you have to keep at bay all the time. Mm. Mm. Because it will always naturally jump in, but you have, to, you have to just not... I don't even think about that anymore. And even with negative comments, there's no, no different. I can't care about it. Yeah. Because yeah. my journey is mm. straight and I'm blindsided and I'm, oh, yeah. I have tunnel vision. I don't care about mm. the negative stuff. Because if I cared about that, how many, mm, mm, how many comments, uh, negative comments can you get on a podcast or anything? Yeah. You know, you can't focus on that part at all. Mm. You know, when I remember when Joe, when I moved to LA in 2000, Joe used to have me open for him and then he would give me 50 cards. And he goes, at the end of the show, we're going to go hand them out to everybody in the audience. And at the end, the, uh, uh, when, when they would leave, he goes, okay, let's go to the parking lot now. For what? We have to pick up the cards that people threw away. Mm. And so we would take it oh. dirty, and he'd wipe them all. And I go, man, are you kind of upset? Out of 100 cards, do we found 60 that people left on the parking lot. He's like... Yo, bro, but there was 40 that kept that's it. it. Bro. Nice. Yeah, that's a glass half yeah. full mentality. Yeah, yeah. and good. so when he said that, I was like, he don't give a shit. Yeah. You know why? Because he's half white. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> no, when you think about it, he, he is half German and half Filipino. Hey. That's, that's Marcos and Hitler. It's hard to beat <laughs> that power. <laughs> you know, I think you have so much energy because you're so Hitler. <laughs> yeah, I love it because like, because you know, there's the, the thing where Filipinos can be emotional type of thing. Like we're so emotional we're so and so expressive of our emotions, and that's why we're so bad in the at the at the gymnastic Olympics. Because if we did parallel bars like the rings, we'd be like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> like we wouldn't be able to have a fucking yeah yeah, yeah you yeah, know yeah. game face. And that's why we're not good in poker. That's it, bro. Oh, like, yeah. die. <laughs> <laughs> or even if it were the good cards, are mm. mm. <laughs> I'll buy shoes tonight. <laughs> we're just too expressive, right? You never see your titas play mahjong. Oh, it's man. all bullshit bluffing, bro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, bro. Yesterday I was at um, um, a park nearby, one of the local parks in Aragonji, and um, with a white van. Okay, and, and they, yeah, with all that stuff. And <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was just walking around to go to the cafe, and then in the corner of like a building that. You it is a venue for like weddings and stuff. In the corner, you see four titas. I think they're playing posoy. Oh my uh, god! And they're just they're going ham. They're like oh, looking. Yeah. At, they're like they're like I know like I know if, because I know a little bit of Tagalog. I knew they were roasting each other yeah. type of thing. They're like really cocky against each other. Oh, that's they're like slamming cards and everything. I'm yeah. like, oh bro. There was ten grand on the table. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. You were going, they were going hard. Well, ten pesos. Ten, 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 ten pesos. Yeah. And then there'll be moments where it'll be silent. 
Yeah. And they're just That's like the, looking at their cards on, and someone's just, pick on by oh, bro, just <laughs> silent persuade. I was like, I was hooked. I was watching that. I was oh, like, yeah. bro, I was watching from a distance because I didn't want to like yeah, yeah. interrupt them because like you know, you know whatever. But like they televised yeah. like poker games. They should televise those this persuade games. Like, games. Like games oh, that games. would be so big in the internet. That'd be mad. Persuade or even uh, you know uh, mahjong, bro. Yeah, and have that be a fifty and up. Yeah. Like 50 years old and up because like that's when the <laughs> let's that's when they it. don't let's give a fuck let's, more let's you know let's start it. that'd be so funny because you know how they show poker and so the audience can see the cards yeah, yeah. and you can see the the expression of their face and you go oh these are bad and they're like so they're faking <laughs> imagine the film oh shit <laughs> my kids cannot go to school now <laughs> Keep it inside. Can I? <laughs> and there'll be like a, a picture in picture with um, the kids that they were supposed to go to school. <laughs> and they'll be like all disappointed and shit. Like, oh, no. <laughs> a knock. We cannot eat more tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's, we have too much expression, man. Yeah, that's it. It's, you can't hide it. You can't hide it. No. It's like, that's, why, that's why I noticed that Filipinos excel in things where you are you are able to express, express the most. Yeah, like texting. Yeah, that's it. Um, <laughs> when that was the thing, and then like I saw like a news thing where you see all these like how popular texting is in the Philippines, and then mm. they see like b like B roll footage of them texting, and they're like they're like mm. their thumb are like going like a hundred miles a minute. Yeah, and we're the we're the most uh, users of Pornhub. Did you know that? I what? actually yeah, the Philippines is the yeah, highest yeah. level of Pornhub. That's my well, the, yeah. Philippines, the Philippines number is also one. like the yeah. highest. Uh, it's just country. us four, really. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm pretty sure it's the same movement with the hand as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just as fast. Just a bit lower. On your TT head. Just, <laughs> just kidding. Man. Let's play video game. <laughs> it's tapping the, tapping the tip. What? <laughs> like a joystick, bro. Sure. Like a, That's funny. A four inch joystick. <laughs> four and a half if you're lucky. <laughs> That's just flexing. Five, five on a good day, right? Five, five Pushing down the skin on the best day. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> so That's why we got circumcised so we could like sh show it all in <laughs> first go. We don't have to pull things anything back. Dude, uh, I fuck in the dark, bro. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I have my clothes on. I just put my dick to the. <laughs> you don't see nothing. <laughs> add a little thumb in it for the extra girth and stuff. <laughs> oh man, okay. they won't know. It's have, it's <laughs> have my black friend under the bed. And just <laughs> tag team. I'm too tired. I had too much canil out today. <laughs> She's like, oh, you took me for a ride. It's like first you're just touching the edges, then after that you went deep, and then yeah, back to and the then edges. you smelled like cocoa butter for thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. oh man! Oh man! Oh, yeah, man. Oh. Having sex in the dark so amazing. <laughs> oh yeah! Isn't there a song about that? Is that? Hey, we should like we like R. Kelly song. <laughs> hey, oh, no. there we go, the, that's another episode that we mention R. Kelly on the <laughs> episode. We're trying or to. Not, we've been trying to not. We're trying not to mention R. Kelly or, or but, P. Diddy, but we've oh, uh, right, 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 failed. Yeah, but we've, we've, we've been failing every single episode. P. Diddle. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Diddy did it. Take that. Take that. P. Did it. Uh, we were talking about like hateful comments and stuff. Right. Do you remember the first like negative comment that you ever gotten on any on any of your social media? Yeah, it was like you're so fat. I was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> like I was on a TV show. Well, was it was it from a Tita? <laughs> no, it was from like I don't like, know. Tita baby random, 108. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was my own Tita. It was like my Tita baby. <laughs> no, it was just I, I remember I was on this. Uh, it, we had a MTV Canada, mm. and I was one of my first TV shows that were on. I was one of the guys that would roast videos. And so I was on regularly. And then I remember this is on their website. They would show comments live while it was on TV. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then they'd be like, oh, that guy's really funny, but he's so fat. I'm like, <laughs> that's oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just but. stupid. It's stupid <laughs> shit. Like I, I, other than the negative comments, I don't really, I kind of don't care at all. And I don't, I, 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 the early negative comments probably hurt. But again, I can't even think or remember. No, nothing really bugs me about mm. that anymore. Yeah, like to be able to do this for over twenty five years, that stuff has to repel off you. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you can't keep going if it hurts. Yeah, especially because, if you yeah. do stand up. Clear Ron's giving away free game, bro. Yeah. Like it's just. You better ah. listen. Of all the <laughs> <laughs> all giddy. I have to. Yeah, I'm like. Uh, I mean, you know, most of the guys. Um, because I. 
when I started comedy, I, you, there's no Filipino communities that do comedy regularly back then. So mm. most of the contemporaries were white and black, yep. Mexican, you know, Asian comics, right? So, and then I moved to LA and the Laugh Factory was my main place I would play. So I would go on with Dane Cook and, and like all these big names, you know? And then when I moved to New York, I would have to go after Chappelle and Chris Rock. That's crazy. And that level is so high to go after I mean learn from that um whatever anybody says outside of those two kind of communities it doesn't matter because we're at the top of the we're at the top of the level there mm. so whatever you say i'm like it doesn't matter i'm it's like a doctor you, you can't make fun of a doctor mm. oh you didn't cut that well it was like whatever <laughs> i've been doing this for 20 fucking years yeah. anything you say doesn't make any sense like if chris rock came up to me and he'd be like um, like this is no this is no joke. Like in the cellar in New York City, they just want you to get better as a comedian. So it's no it's they would come up to you if they hated your jokes or they liked your jokes or they want to help you. So it's not it, even my friend had had Chappelle come up to me and goes, Yo, that joke's amazing. I think you should add this to it. Yeah, I love that. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So. And then so I would get that from different comedians that were famous too. And so who are they? Who's anybody outside that community to tell me anything? Yeah. I would go, if Chappelle liked what I did, or Chris Rock liked what I did, or Bill Burr liked what I did, and they go, oh, that joke was really good, you know? Who are they to say anything? That's it. That's, That's like a kindergarten yeah. kid. This is a standard, right? The yeah, standard's like, right. Yeah, I, I listen to those guys. Those yeah. are my teachers. Mm, yeah. Like, I, I remember doing a joke, and uh, I think it was like, <laughs> like Sarah Silverman or some, I can't remember. She was just like, "Yeah, that guy, that joke, they take it out." I go, "What? It's, it's very '80s." I go, "Okay," so I took yeah. it out. So I listen to them. Anybody else? I don't give a shit because they, well, they don't live in my yeah. world. It's your peers, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I get that. Yeah, it's kind of like even in MMA. Would you want? And you ever see this? You'll be watching uh, an MMA fight, and then I would see that I. Even live MMA, I used to go watch UFC live a lot, mm. and I would hear people beside me going, "Man, that wrong! You should have punched him in the face." And I look back, and I'm like, "You're a, f a slob. Mm. What do you know about anything? <laughs> yeah. You know, who are you to tell yeah. this guy what to do in MMA?" Yeah. So that is the exact same feeling I have when people say, "Hey, you don't, I don't like your joke," and I go, "Dude, you're not Chris Rock, so fuck off." Yeah, that's it. You know, because like I'm getting it from the the real horse's mouth if yeah. it's good or bad. Because if I don't perform, if I don't get to go back on the stage in LA, New York, that means I sucked. Yeah, mm. they only put that you back true. on if you constantly kill. That's the hard. And you've been doing it for like thirty years now. Like, yeah. So that means yeah. you've been doing something right, right? Like, yeah. Even, I mean, never, yeah. Yeah. Being famous has nothing to do with being good. Yeah, that's true. Technically good, you could be the best te te technically good fighter and you may not even make it to the UFC because mm. your time of being noticed is too small. Mm. You know, being being seen uh, and helps your career, but if you don't get seen, you'll just be a great person that nobody knows, mm -hmm. which technically still makes you, st will still get you work, you know? Mm. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to talk about Filipino stereotypes because like, like when you started the comedy thing, uh, like, were you doing like the jokes about Filipinos, but people wouldn't know who a Filipino was, type of thing? Because like, it, like this. Yeah, when I started comedy, there was no Filipino comics mm. in Canada. Um, I was the first, and nobody knew what a Filipino was. <laughs> so I was Chinese for my first two years, <laughs> like legit. Yeah, like, I yeah. told them I was Chinese. I would just be like <laughs> talking about Chinese shit, <laughs> and I got an award in. Canada from the first <laughs> Chinese comic. You're the first Chinese yeah. comic. They're like, oh, we gave you an award for the best Chinese comic. And I'm like, oh, thank you very much. Where are your parents from? Oh, Hong Kong. <laughs> and like, then did you just blend in the Filipino like, yeah. like Well, if in? you watch early Joe Koi and BT, BT, he basically said he was Japanese. Wow. He was, yeah. I ate sushi. Like he was talking yeah. about sushi and kung fu movies. So everybody, even me, Seeing him on BET back in like the 90s, mm. I was like, oh man, that Japanese comic is amazing. When I met Joe, I'm like, I didn't know you're Filipino. I was like, yeah, bro. I got that you're Japanese. I go, why? Because you only talked about sushi and kung fu and shit <laughs> and being a ninja. When did that change? Like, is, was there like a little thing that just clicked or it is? Was so what happened was thing? I was doing it for two to three years. I thought I was the first Filipino comic ever in the world. Yeah. And then I was on Napster and I oh, saw wow. this guy, Rex Neverete. Mm. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit, this guy 
is doing comedy too. And then he did real Filipino stuff. I didn't know that the Bay, which is basically San Francisco area, yeah. had the first Filipinos come in in the 1500s. So they've been there longer Gosh, than right. being. So Filipinos came to Canada in the 70s. Filipinos came to California in the 1500s, Whoa. right? And when they came there, there were laborers. Mm. Uh, Rex Neverete gave me this book called Filipino Martial Law of actual written uh, writings of Filipinos in San Francisco, or in, in, in America in the 1500s, 1600s. Mm. And there were so many rules that we couldn't do. Wow. You couldn't marry a white girl. Mm. You couldn't vote. You could, like, there was so much stuff, right? And then there were like these uh, messages that white girls would write about Filipinos. Like these uh, jungle people oh, are incredible dancers. They can play pool. They could play guitars yeah. and they serenade us yeah. to, 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 to mm. court us. All facts. Yeah. And then, and they're unbelievable and kind of lingus. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what? And I, and I was like, you know why we're so good at going down? It's because we have small noses. You know, because <laughs> we can get closer. <laughs> the closer. Like if you took a European and a Filipino and pushed them against a corner of a wall, whose face would be closer? <laughs> <laughs> it's our noses that that help, and so I, I, I thought it, it, I thought it was all the blood eating. Oh, the blood eating, that, like you know, prepare. You know, you just like you're just down there and you start tapping the yeah, yeah, the yeah. vagina. <laughs> I don't know. Slurp it out <laughs> like embryo. I think it's more the casino. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, so reading these books, I was like, oh, this is crazy. So Rex Neverete introduced me to that, and then so what happened was. He sent me a message um, saying, I'm going to Canada and I, wanna, I want you to open for me. And I'm like, oh my God, the guy sent me a message? Mm. And so we would... The what type of message was this back in the day? Yeah, what was like, like, um, okay. that America Na Online? Or? Oh, AOL. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Napster era, that would have been like 2005-ish? Uh, around 2000s, there. Yeah. Or even earlier. Earlier. Yeah, because mm. yeah, he, he started in 1999 and he kind of... Or 1989, and he kind of blew up in 1999. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so uh, I was like, yeah. So he flew down to my to uh, Toronto, and the University of Toronto had a Filipino community that asked me to. Uh, they go, hey, Rex wants you to open for him. So they, I'm like, holy shit. So my first Filipino show was 1999, and uh, I was like, what material will I do? Because I've never really did for anything for Filipinos, mm -hmm. right? And so. I said, I just did my act and I, I put maybe five minutes of stuff that we all related to in the middle and that killed more than everything I did. Mm. And then from that point, from 1999, Rex started asking me to come to San Francisco, LA, mm. Hawaii. So I was opening up for Rex since like 1999. So I already learned two worlds. And so when I do my Filipino shows, I, I position the regular material in certain areas and they build it up to a Filipino act in the middle mm. to the end, you know, but the beginning, I'm like, look, this is for everybody. And then by the end, it's already, it's hardcore Filipino jokes, mm. right. you know, but everybody can still relate to it because I live both lives. Yeah. I love it. It's like when Jay-Z would perform his reasonable doubt stuff in mm. one little section. Right, right. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, this is for my hardcore fans. Yeah. It's like, no, yeah. no. 100%. And is it like, like that, almost yeah. like testing the audience too yeah. as well? Just to be like, are these guys like, like the first few, you do a few like, yeah. slight Filipino jokes. If it's really hitting, then you just really go all out. Or you, no matter what, that's the formula. Um, you know, when you do, uh, when you do, when you, when you do comedy for a Filipino audience, yeah. they'll naturally love uh, the connection you make with them through our culture. Yeah. Right? But that doesn't mean it's good material. Mm. Mm. I have to make it work on both ways. So whatever I do that's for the Filipinos, I could actually make it into a white or black or a mixed crowd. So I, I can't just do it for one yeah. position because you're, you're wasting material just writing for one people. Yeah. It has to work on both ways or doesn't. I will never do it. You know, because if you if there's a white people person in the crowd, they'll walk away because they don't understand. Yeah, mm. well, feel, what would I want? Out or something. Yeah. yeah, the white people last night loved the show. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, they yeah. didn't feel they were left out. Mm. They say I learned a lot because I didn't even know. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And then you know, that's dope. That's dope. Like, and and is there was there any case where you'd be like 
because of your rise was it any show that was no filipinos at all um always no, i, I still one. do shows that are no mm. like my majority of shows i do are no filipinos mm. these are special shows i do for because I, I i started going viral and when i do these special shows i add more filipino uh Uh, jokes to it mm. where in a regular crowd I couldn't put that much stuff in it mm. you know now I could put more and more and more into it it works both ways but even better for the Filipino audience I could do more Filipino stuff I can't do okay. pure Fil like if I did my 20 minutes of Filipino stuff in a, in a white audience they mm. would hate it yeah. yeah they'd be like oh man too much of this shit mm. yeah Man, my eyes are getting slanted now. <laughs> you know? So you have you have like uh, you have like two separate like columns of uh, jokes, right? Yeah. The, the, the non-Filipinos and like Filipino ones and stuff. Yeah. Right? And and like what what because like I feel like we we've only seen the shows that have the Filipino jokes in it. What's a what's a what's a show with, without the jo uh, Filipino jokes like? Is it? Do you research the the kind of the country type of thing or no, like uh, like basically what you saw, saw last night? Mm is with maybe i did 30 minutes of filipino material maybe 25 i would do only 10 mm. but the rest of it's the same okay because when i start out i know i don't really talk about mm. being filipino yet yeah i talk about the different countries i've gone to yeah you know and like and that's something that's also cool about doing these tours i'll meet filipinos from different parts of the world like paris you know or like dubai or like where there's filipinos in texas and in London or whatever that they born and raised in those countries mm. right and they always ask me like hey well, like what what are we because if you're not from Manila from Philippines and you're born in other yeah. countries you're kind of confused mm. you know and most what I've noticed that most Filipinos are confused of their where they're from the, the identity yeah yeah you know because if you're the truth is yeah. be doing the research I didn't know this when I first went to Malaysia in 2009 I was walking around Malaysia and I heard bits of Filipino. I'm like, what is this guy said mahal? It's expensive. This person said, you know, he mm. was saying in Malaysian words. And then when I went to Indonesia, um, I went, I was in Indonesia and I went to a grocery store and I saw a, a bottle of curry and underneath it said kari kari. Oh, wow. mm. And I'm like, and I asked the lady, I'm like, what, what is this kari kari, which is a Filipino dish or is it curry? And then the guy, the girl happened to be mixed Filipino and Indonesian. She's like, oh, you're not from, you don't know what, how Kari Kari came to be? I'm like, no. He's like, okay. Uh, before, she basically broke it down to me. She was like, before Dutch went to Indonesia, British went to Malaysia and Singapore, and Spain went to the Philippines, it was all called Malayu. Yeah. And they all spoke one language. And when all these races came in, they split the language up, mm. right? And so I go, so what about Kare Kare? It was like, well, before it was Malayu, India came in and gave us curry. Mm. And we took out the cumin, coriander, and mm. turmeric, and we just added peanuts, and we called it Kare Kare. I love that. <laughs> I'm like, that's so Filipino. I don't like this. Just put these peanuts. <laughs> yeah, like, what do I like? Oh, I like eating peanuts watching TV. Let's poof. Just put it in there, right? Let's so, put it in there. So kare kare actually came from the word curry. Yeah, mm. You know, and the, the comedy club in Indonesia is called Katawa Comedy Club. That means laugh. Yeah. Mm. In Tagalog and Visaya. You know, so our language has, we share 400 words of with Indonesia, Malaysia. Mm. So that means we were part of that culture at one point. Mm. You know, and I'm like, so what are... What was Malayu? Was it Chinese? And they're like, no, it was mixed with Indian. Mm. I go, what? They're wow. like, why do you think we're brown? Mm. Why do you think some of us can grow beards? <laughs> mm. I'm like, wait, what are Filipinos? We're, well, before Spain came, we're Malayus, and Malayus, but before we're called Malayus, were mixed with Indian and Chinese. Chinese. Yeah, that's why I married an Indian. Uh, now it makes sense. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going back to your roots. We, are, we always <laughs> joke the rap is part Indian. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we are mixed with a little bit of everything. Yeah. With a hybrid race. I love it. I love it. Yeah. We're like, mixed. We're like, we're like a computer, a master computer. Like, <laughs> 
<laughs> master computer. Like, you know how people like build answer. computers now? And we're just like a mix of everything. We're Frankenstein, basically. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Asian Frankenstein, for sure. Yeah, yeah. What's the weirdest place you've been that you didn't realize there were Filipinos at? Uh, Norway. Yeah. Like, remember that yeah, story? Yeah, I was thinking, because when you mentioned it, I was like, that was So that, that was the third or second time I did that joke. Yeah. Where I talked about going to Norway, meeting the Filipino community, and they're all <laughs> they're white, white women. That 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 were one tenth Filipino. That's crazy. And I asked them where they how how the Filipinos come here, and they're like, well, back in the 1500s, the Vikings couldn't find their way back from Asia, so they hired Filipinos because they were the best navigators for the sea. And I said, well, so the Filipinos are the original GPS. And he's like, yes, we're on the bow going, make a left here, make a right turn, watch out for the whale. You yeah. know, like what Lex Shakira said, the, the lips don't lie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah the you Filipinos. Can you can imagine them in front of the ship. They're like, that's hey. hilarious. I'm gonna add that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm adding that to the joke. Over there. Yeah, Over there. Yeah. That's why my dad loves hummingbirds because like they have the same lips as me. <laughs> <laughs> because if you follow if you follow the um the hummingbirds in the direction their lips are going, you'll mm -hmm. find your local jolly bee. Oh that's right. That's why we don't have hummingbirds here because we don't like <laughs> we don't have no jolly bee here. I'm whatsoever. surprised you guys don't have jolly bee. Uh, we've been trying it's to been fight that into like I'm I I was gonna ask you, do you know the reason? Reason why we have no Jolly Bee? Would you know? No, because like we've been trying to get Jolly Bee here for the last twenty years. Come on, Jolly Bee! And every every three years, there's like a like a, a rumor, rumor that it's coming, and it never happens. Really? Yeah, They're just edging us, getting blue balls. I feel like it's a toxic relationship between Australian Filipinos and Jolly Bee because they say they're gonna be. They're gonna like you know come here and treat us you know with the Filipino goods, but it never happens. Oh man, one day it'll be coming. I'm, I'm, like they have one in Manhattan. In mm. the heart of Manhattan. Manhattan, in Times Square. Was that yeah. recent though? Yeah. Because the Just London one year. was very recent too. So maybe it's, I don't know, it's bubbling and up. And packed with non-Filipinos. Yeah. Like you see them going, oh man, this chicken's so much better than KFC. Yeah. There's a little spice to it. And then the burgers. They, they, they it's it. so, it's bought by the owners of Target oh, in America. Shit. Really? No way. Yeah. Oh. And all the Targets have been bought out here by Kmart. So... I don't know. I'm just trying to, to find a way to get Jolly Bee. I'm trying to so connect the dots. Connect the dots. Just like connecting it. Yeah. Like, look, forget up. Pie Face. Bring <laughs> you know, Jolly Bees. Yeah. That's it, man. We'll bring, we'll trade like we'll we'll trade you Pie Face for a Jolly Bee anytime. Mm. Hey, man. If anytime. I can make it happen, bro. If you can make it happen, bro. Yeah. Did you say it's five dollars to invest? <laughs> Is that you really like Pie Face? I love Pie Face. Yeah. What's what's the what's your What's something that's unique to Australia that you've noticed? Um, a kangaroo meat. Oh, wow. uh, yeah. Yeah, so my, my cousin, uh, whenever I'm at her house, she barbecues kangaroo meat. Yeah. yeah. So we'll go to the grocery store. And so I didn't know you could just go to the grocery store and buy yeah. kangaroo meat. Mm. And then, uh, so that's something I like. I wanted to try the, uh, uh, what is it, the kangaroo tails, but I don't know where to find that. Yeah, they don't sell this. Mm. Yeah, to me, yeah, that's just oxtail. It's yeah, no yeah, difference. Yeah. I'll make curry curry with that. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. My dad used to sell um, the ostrich neck. Right. Re remember when I, the ostrich, ostrich balot? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so my dad made an ostrich balot. I told you about mm. that, right? That's so, nuts, man. I can't believe it. How big was it really? Cool. Yeah, it was like an ostrich balot, man. Yeah. I swear, it looked like aliens. You can make a pho out of it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome, fun. bro. Like, he drinks half a thing, goes, oh, I'm full. I'm so full now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, was, it was disgusting. I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah. But then he, he would sell ostrich too. So he would sell ostrich neck to the Filipino community and say, oh, it's different. It's like oxtail. You can make curry curry. And they, he'd sell it. Yeah. He would sell stuff for, to Filipinos that they, they just trusted him because he brought. So my dad came to Canada in 64. Right. right. And he met my mom in the Holiday Inn. And it was Filipino Thursday nights in 1964, <laughs> and there were only 50 Filipinos in the Canada at the time. And that con and the, the Holiday Inn turned into the first comedy club I performed in in 1995. Hey. Yeah. yeah, so my dad goes, so you're doing the comedy now? I go, yeah, where? Oh, I'm doing it at this old place where the old Holiday Inn was. Oh, that's where I met your mom. I go, where? Yeah, oh, yeah. So and that night I, I, I impregnated her. I was like, okay. God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my dad, my so he brought our uh, Filipino foods to, to Canada because right. his job was he was a, obviously a nurse with yeah. my mom yeah mm. and uh, he was like how do I uh, how do I make more money so he brought Filipino foods imported to Canada in the 70s nice yeah so he's, he's the first to bring Luganisa to Sino we supplied 
pretty much most of the country Filipino food Boom. in the seventies. So growing up, we were poor, and then we were rich in the eighties. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we're like, my dad's like, we were in the ghetto, and all of a sudden we're like, we're going to a mansion. We're like, wow. <laughs> you know? Is that because you're making all the longanese in the basement? <laughs> like he was selling ostrich necks to these Filipinos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was. That's, crazy. Yeah. That's, That's that ostrich. Money. He would sell balut to white people. And tell them it was regular eggs. <laughs> it's, it's like a you know, discussing that it's morning the breakfast was. <laughs> what do you want, honey? Breaking his crock. <laughs> oh. It's not even developed. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. He would sell balo to non Filipinos. Yeah. And they're like, what happened? It, 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 oh, it, it grew up in your fridge. Like, it grew up in your fridge. <laughs> You sure you have a? Do you, have a you don't have an incubator, not a fridge. <laughs> That's crazy. You're gonna you get your fridge checked. I know somebody. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always a hustle. Yeah. Oh, my dad was a pure hustle. He was selling hustle. banana leaves on the street of Manila. Yeah. Like that guy was, and he moved to. He went to Canada in his, when he was 18. Mm. Wow. So he took pictures of McDonald's, like that. You know, when you go to McDonald's at the menu. Yeah. Mm. And it was like 25 cent ham. Wow. Big Macs. Oh, dude. Yeah. yeah, like he he would take pictures of all the different things he yeah. could see. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny because if you you ever find your parents' history when they first moved out here. Yeah, I need, yeah. I need to do that. I it's want weird because yeah. they're like there were zero Philippines. It's a whole My different was, world. Yeah, yeah. Like when I went to the Philippines after years. Of not going, and I was in my uh, mid thirties. I met my dad. Uh, my dad's uh, sister and her husband was there, and he gave me these letters that my dad would send him in mm. the sixties. Wow! Of like, oh, I just got a job delivering cakes downtown on a bike. Yeah, you know, like weird jobs. Oh, you know, man. and I'm, I, and he goes, oh, I'm living in an apartment with five buckles. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm like, you're living with five gay people? He's like, oh yeah, they're really nice. Oh, and and he'd be like, they're the ones that bought me a car. I go. They wow. bought you a yeah. car. Hey. But what did you do in exchange? It's like, oh, they just have to, they just want to massage me. <laughs> and I'm like, you made me massage you. Did you ever massage your dad? When you yeah. <laughs> as a kid, what what the fuck was that shit? He, no, he always wanted. He's like, he's like, step on my back. I'm yeah, like, step on. What? what for? I'm like what? I don't know. He just he's like, can you step on my back? I'm like, what? What do you want me to? Do? I started like, yeah, yeah. Kicking his, that really hurt my foot. Um, <laughs> I, I just start kicking his kicking his back just to mess with him. Yeah. He's like, okay, that's enough. That's enough. My my my, my dad made my brother and I massage his back, mm. I, and I didn't know. And then when you go to Asia when you're older, you're like, oh, everything is massage. Yeah. Mm. You know, like in the Philippines, you can get a two dollar massage for an hour, and wow. like in Cebu, that's like cool. a really good one, no happy ending, just a real straight up good one. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like, like that's the one thing because I mentioned my wife's Indian, mm -hmm. and that's the one thing she gets disappointed about. Like, like you're you're Asian, you're supposed to know how to massage, oh, yeah. and I can't massage for that's shit. That's why she married you. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed you to didn't, yeah, you right. didn't hold up your end like, deal. Was, yeah, yeah. So the Asian side of me is like, oh, sorry, my bad. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's why I grew a beard, so I look less of an Asian you can, and more oh, Indian, yeah. and be like, I'm part of you. You guys. can you can go to Thailand and get like a certification over like a few days for massaging mm. in Thailand. Are you I, serious? Yep. I've, so I've heard, so I've heard. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's do it somebody, again. Somebody told me, somebody told me. <laughs> you could change this into a massage folder, like after hours. This yeah. is perfect. Yeah, right yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, same thing. And then you can just hang your clothes over here. We were, <laughs> we, we were going to make it into a Filipino themed strip club. Are you serious? That was one of the ideas. We, that, that was cool. That was right here. Oh, my that was, bad. That was, was our plan. Secret, <laughs> secret, secret plan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don, Don was our only strip club. I've never been to a Filipino strip club. Have you been to a strip club in the Philippines? Yeah, it's, it's just a denickling um, sticks, but hilarious. But, vertical. Naked. but it's vertical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Take the sticks, put it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so <It's> hilarious. <laughs> the danger is hot. <laughs> And there's always gonna be like a like a little corner with the lich on spinning around and yeah. stuff. But it's so. a girl <laughs> <laughs> and a guy behind her with a long titi. <laughs> I will skewer your wrist. Yeah. There's just one guy. There's, there's one guy in the corner. He's like covered in a barrel. You have to lift it up, and his dick is straight oh, up. Man. The barrel man. <laughs> Jesus. Um, oh man. And then when they dress up as nurses, it's just actual scrubs. Oh my god. Yeah. That's hot. <laughs> That's hot. <laughs> This just uh, came from work. <laughs> this just came from work. Ooh, sexy nurse uh, You know what? Uh, not even a joke. Uh, I used to go to the strip club, uh, <laughs> and there was it was an Asian strip club, and there were always Chinese, Vietnamese, mm. but the, the Filipinos. I remember I, when I was nineteen, twenty, 
they'd come in late because they came from work. Like they had other jobs. Yeah, yeah. And the girl had groceries, put it <laughs> beside the stage, went up, <laughs> took off her clothes, and she didn't do it sexy. She's just like, <clears throat> okay, you see that? Okay, you, you see this one? Okay, I'm gone. And she'd get up and take her groceries and go, you want dance? You want dance? And we're like, no, no, you're like my tita. It was so good. Like, who does this? <laughs> you know what it's like, it's a flashlight. You know what we Instead of making it rain money, just making it rain fruit, and then she just catch it in a grocery basket. Oh man, <laughs> she brought it. There you go. That's messed up. It's like now for the true Filipino experience, Tito baby. Oh, I love that now. I'm a Tito man. I'd be like that. Oh yeah, Tito, show me. You just came from work. <laughs> just yeah. came from she, work. Yeah. <laughs> she leaves her thing, starts cooking on stage for some reason, and then oh, that'd be amazing. She still got her like telemarketer headset on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she changes a baby's diaper on stage. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Who's next? <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> you ever get a, a tita in a in a rub and tug? It's the worst. Okay, hurry up! <laughs> hurry up! I cannot wait all day. Hurry up! Why so small? <laughs> Do you need Viagra? <laughs> <laughs> and the grocery still on the side huh? yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know why it's taking rush. too long because you watch too much TV <laughs> <laughs> hurry up are you <laughs> oh, Filipino rubber talks hilarious bro I, uh, yeah. we should all go <laughs> <laughs> we should all go <laughs> yeah, you know I, I went to Let's Myanmar yeah. I went to Myanmar before like their problems right so I used to go to Myanmar a lot to do shows and I was there with another Filipino friend of mine Justin Rivera he's he's 6'2 mm. 250 280 and everybody in Myanmar is five feet and under mm. right so we go there and we go massages and these girls go at the end they're like uh can we cuddle you <laughs> we're like why because we don't have men this big and so they wanted to be the big spoon <laughs> and so they would cuddle us and they'd be like don't just at least 10 minutes please and they would just hold us and we're like this is the weirdest Whoa. thing yeah and we have to pay for it. That's stupid. Wait, you're okay, I was gonna say you should have charged them. Hey, for it. it sounds like a scam. Yeah, yeah, you should have invoiced them. Yeah. Yeah. Invoiced and then them they're like, "What's that hard going thing going in my ass?" Yeah. 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 It's the bigger spoon. <laughs> it's the wooden spoon. It's the wooden spoon. <laughs> Fork. God. That's, a, oh, man. that's crazy. That's one of the countries that you recently went to. I, I, I last time I was there like before the pandemic. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah I, I usually do like. You know, Philippines, then Vietnam, Thailand, Cambodia, Myanmar, and right. then I would do sometimes India, Pakistan, and you know Sri Lanka, or I would go the other side and just do like, you know, Thai, uh, Taiwan, Japan. Is Korea. that for like for tours? Like, do you do gigs there? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. I don't do it for. I, I never go for just for fun. Right. It's right. only work. Right. Mm. right, right. Yeah, mm. and I enjoy the cities and the countries I go to, but. I don't go there just to see it. I'm. I have to be booked there. Right. Yeah. So these are all countries I I get booked. Yeah. Yeah. No. Mm. I love it. That's, 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 that's life, such man. a Filipino thing. It's like, nah, you pay me to go. To exactly. Your country. <laughs> I found. I figure out how to make the world pay for my travels. Yeah. And, and my food. <laughs> that's it. I that's it. all I want. <laughs> like, I, want I, I literally want to do six months in the U.S. and then six months overseas. Hell yeah. Because U.S. eventually, like honestly, I love it for the what we do, what I do. But you know, with Trump, and it's just so hard. Like the the racism now, yeah. the division. Mm. It's really hard out there. Like for if you're brown, yeah. right, right. Is yeah, it, so. this is a recent thing, right? Or yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it wasn't always like that. No, I, I mean I think what happened was, you know, the not Republicans but MAGA mm. allowed mm. the uh, racist to crawl out of the rocks and go, hey, we have a voice yeah. now. Mm. Well, they were there, but they were like more, we're back. Kind yeah, of. they're they're more like you know what's it called benign <laughs> they're just yeah, like yeah. quiet and then all yeah. of a sudden they're like hey we, we we want this back we want this back so you feel that wow. yeah, okay. you know like uh, I was in South Carolina and I played there for 15 years so it's always been easy for me to play then recently I walked off the stage and never came back I, like Saturday night I'm like I'm done with your club I didn't even do five minutes ten minutes yeah. I left yeah Why was because that? there was a crowd there was, the, there was a couple in the front row they weren't laughing at all, but I was, everybody else was laughing. After 30 minutes, I'm like, hey, weren't you guys laughing? And they're like, um, we don't want to be rude, but we don't, we don't like your face. Mm. And I go, what do you mean? Don't like my face. Like it looks, and it was like, ah, we don't like your face. 
I go, then why won't, why don't you leave? And you know what the woman says? Because that would be rude. Mm-hmm. I go, no, it's more ruder that you say you don't like my face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's like, okay, well, just as long as you're not offended that we're leaving. I go, why do you care about how I feel if you don't like my face? Because we're, we're, cause it's Southern hospitality. And I said, oh, you know why you guys have Southern hospitality? Because it balances your racism. <laughs> you you can open a door for me and call me chink because that's okay for you. Yeah. yeah. So after this, that show, I was like, and then the second show was kind of felt like that. Mm. And I'm like, you know what? I'm done here. And yeah. the reason why I left is because I also heard the manager or the owner saying, oh, he's doing this Asian stuff again. Uh, and I'm, mm. and so I call my manager uh, there, uh, who's Jewish and I go, hey, I can't play that club no more because I heard this. And she's like, if they can't back you up as an artist, right like i can then fuck them yeah mm. right, right. and she's like fuck them never play there again and mm. she she's behind me 100 percent. love it yeah yeah so i you know you feel this now in some parts of america not everywhere yeah, yeah. but some of the places i would play down south or whatever more ready states that would feel that yeah yeah mm. wow yeah so coming out here and in, in the in, in the just asia in general and especially here too, like in asia you just feel a little bit more relaxed mm. yeah, yeah you know like if you because as an Asian person, you kind of blend in with everybody mm. in Asia. Even as, as much as they can see you're a little different, yeah. there's not that other side that attacks you ever. Yeah. You don't feel that at all. Yeah. You know? mm. Because as a, a comedian, stand-up comedian, you're like a DJ, right? You can read the room. Yeah. Like, even with you no can one feel laugh, you can feel different the vibe. laughter, too. Yeah. Mm. Some yeah. laughter you like, some laughter you don't like. Mm. You can tell what's a real, genuine laugh, yeah. and then you can tell what's This is one there. laugh I hate. <laughs> Where's that? I'm like, Sounds Where's like that? Eastern Europe? <laughs> no, it's uh, racist. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Eastern Europe. <laughs> you can just feel it. Yeah, you, you can know? just feel that. Like, yeah, you can judge. You can feel the vibe of the room by how they laugh. Right, right, yeah, yeah. I love that. Um, yeah. SK and I have done like shows before, and we it, predominant, pre- predominantly white crowd, and we'd say some of the like the Filipino stuff, the Asian stuff. And then we'd hear them laugh and they were like, are they laughing because they understand? Are they at laughing you. because yeah. it's like... It's yeah, there's a difference between with you and at you. Yeah. So I, my, one of my friends who turned into a hardcore MAGA comic, mm. right? And I'm still his friend because mm. it's his politics. You know, it doesn't affect us as friends sometimes. But he used to have me open for him a lot. And I used to go, why did I kill so hard in the MAGA audience? Mm. And I go, what's going on? Cause, and I also go, this laughter I don't like. Mm. And yeah. I realized that I was, I was, uh, I was. They were living the racism through me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. whenever I would not do Asian stuff, they're like, "Do the accent again." And I'm mm. like, "Oh, I don't like that." Yeah. yeah. Like, no, I, I'll do it when I need to do it. But you, you just wanted me to do pure accent. Yeah. So yeah. you can li- laugh. So because you can't, you can't get away with it. Mm. Yeah. So you want me. To do the so they don't listen to the premise or the idea of anything. Right. Yeah. They just go, just do the accent. Can you do more of the accent? Mm. You're like, fuck, man, that's so terrible. Mm. So now you're a monkey. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So and then that's why it's kind of like there's a bad laughter too, and I could feel that they they just like, oh, do that thing again that makes us laugh. Mm. When did you learn that that sort of um, tech? That, because that's a skill to figure out what type of laughter you're getting from the audience. When did that come in your career? Fuck, that's that's a good question because actually, hey Reuven, <laughs> are you sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> He's had a long day. All right, never, never sleep. <laughs> uh, uh, honestly, we you you go through this whole thing and all of a sudden you you don't feel good. Mm. Yeah. So there was a remember when Chappelle left the Chappelle show? Mm. Yeah. That was the same thing. Because he yeah. was given fifty thousand, fifty million dollars, to n- not to allow other people to help him write, and they what they wanted is him to to do more things that would make other people laugh that he, uh, for the yeah. wrong reason. Yeah. yeah, and so he said, "Nope, I'm walking away from that." Mm. Right? That is that that moment happened probably. I felt it early on, but then. I didn't know what it was, and then eventually, maybe after ten years, I was like, "My, I feel actually, it was a Filipino. Two Filipinos are working as the uh, a wait staff mm. in a comic club in, in Toronto, and they're like, "Man, I hate th- that fucking side." I go, "Why?" Because every time you do Filipino jokes, 
mm. and you could tell that they're laughing for the wrong reason yeah mm. uh, you know and it was too it was like not just laughing but it was like oh my god that's mm. hilarious like do the accent again right mm. and so when i went up for the, uh, the other show i would i would notice it even more and they were never nice to me after the show okay they, they were mm. like you know just ignore me and so i'm like oh so you're just i'm just doing something like a whore for them yeah mm. you know and so mm. uh you could you could feel that just a vibration alone mm. you know so uh i probably 10 years in i felt that okay yeah, well. yeah so yeah. now when i do see here's the hard part when when because it went viral and more filipinos are coming out they're generally love laughter mm. yeah yeah and i compare that level of laughter to everywhere else and it can't compare anymore Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's hard for me to even do the shows I used to do yeah. in small towns in, in middle of yeah, America and yeah. Canada. I I would say no to them mm. because when you play for an audience that's there to hear your voice, they're listening to every word and they're accepting your philosophy too. Mm. And when you're doing it for a crowd that really doesn't know you, they just want to laugh at a very basic level because they were tired at work. Mm. and that's not yeah. what i'm doing i'm doing it to also uplift yeah. the community more than yeah. just make you laugh yeah because yeah. everybody makes you laugh in, a, in comedy yeah. but what makes it different is there's some comics that do it for a higher reason yeah mm. and for me it's not to be famous it's not to be the hollywood comic it's for me to go hey man i'm only in this world for this amount of time and this is what i'm going to teach you and tell you about our culture mm. that we may not know and may help you in your life yeah mm. you know because that's my new goal mm. yeah my new goal was never it, it, before was hey gotta get to hollywood gotta get, now it's it's not even close to that mm. it's now like hey man i want to tell you that you are the same people uh, same filipinos i met in france yeah or, or Portugal or Spain yeah. that are also uh, want to hear a voice mm. that we haven't had because Joe Coy's voice is a different voice from Rex too. Yeah. yeah, you know if you look if you listen to Rex Navarrete, holy shit, that's fucking deep, mm. real Filipino shit. Yeah, so deep that it doesn't work anywhere else. Anywhere else. Mm. And Joe's is not as deep, but it's very American and Hollywood. Mm. They're both good. Uh, I would love to be somewhere like in the middle of that, you know, mm. where it's not about Hollywood and it's not about just our community. It's about our community and everybody else around us. I love how you just like added layers to that thing when people from the outside could just look at it as just one thing, you know, yeah. but not knowing that, there's, you know, the accent, even just a little sound of the accent, is a, there's layers to it. It's true. And, and when I used to do the accent, the Fil so I started doing Philippine, going to the Philippines doing comedy there 15, 12, 15 years ago. And so I used to go, oh man, they're going to make, they're going to not like my accent because yeah. they're going to go on making fun of them. Mm. Mm. Right. So, cause it works. Look, when you're in the North America or the Western world, even here, and you do Filipino jokes, you kind of make fun of what we used to do. Yeah. We're here now. We're here in a Western world. So this is, Stupid things we used to do. Mm. An example is a friend of mine had a joke uh, that didn't work in the Philippines, but works in America. He goes, yeah. you know, in the Philippines, man, uh, they don't have a lost and found. They have a who's belongs this, which is very funny. It did not work in the <laughs> Philippines. They're <laughs> yeah, like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah. you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, well, who the fuck are you to say that? Yeah. So it works because we made it here. Mm. It's for the Filipinos that made money, that yeah. left the poor country. You know, so mm. we, they kind of make fun of that. So I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. yeah. So when I first started doing the Fili Philippines. Philippines, doing the Philippines, I would do the accent and they would laugh. And I used to go, "Hey, GB," and all these Filipino comics that that run the scene now. I go, D "Are you guys feeling I make fun of you?" And I was like, "No, your accent is so cartoonish oh. that it's so funny, right? Because okay. we don't sound like that, right? Mm. Like we do not sound like that. Mm. Yeah. They sound like this. Oh, we don't sound like that." Yeah. Mm. but when i do it they're like it's like a cartoon version of what we do that's why it's funny okay. yeah you know okay. so it was it was tricky to do because you don't i'm not there to offend them yeah and i don't want to talk about hey you guys do weird shit and we don't yeah you know so when i tell the bullet story and the and it's basically me saying i'm exactly like you i just can't speak the language mm. and i was brought up somewhere else but every single thing we 
share is the same. Can relate yeah. To, yeah. You know, we state, we cry the same, we offend the same, we eat the same, we still have the values. You know, we still love our families. Mm. We're still the same. And they love that because they think we are lost in America sometimes. Right. Mm. right. And they want to know that we're not. Yeah. Because yeah. well, they really still have custom. old customs that we don't do, you know? Mm. Like they still, like you still got to court some girls out there. Yeah. Mm. I'm like, holy shit. I cannot, I know you take me out at least for two weeks. Like, shit. <laughs> Fuck, man. Like, I need this to be sucked today. <laughs> <laughs> Swipe left. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's man. Yeah. You so know, they have old yeah. customs. Russ, you know, um, that sounds similar to, you know, Russell Peters. He's yeah. from. My Canada first friend in well. comedy. Yeah. And yeah. he says a very similar thing when he, because his uh, comedy style is very much on like the accents. Yeah. And, the, and he said the exact same thing. Like when he'd go to India, when he'd do the accent, he wasn't sure if they were. Like right, gonna, how right. they would take it would they actually yeah. get it or not and then yeah. when, he, when he did the accent they actually laughed harder and they liked it and it's like he's like oh he was like, yeah and, and it comes from a unmalice like if, yeah. if, if you come there with a general authentic uh, way of not trying to hurt them it doesn't come from a bad place yeah. you could tell right away yeah you know when you're there like it's funny um, when Joe Koi did his special in the Philippines he did some open mics to practice yeah. to to do you know, his bits. Yeah, and he went to one open mic that I go to a lot, and they're saying that a lot of the jokes he was doing wasn't working. Yeah, until he did more friendly Filipino stuff, because some of the stuff was a little too rough for them. Too rough. Yeah. Yeah. So he had to also taper, tweak it. And tweak it yeah. yeah. Is that a common thing comedians do? Do you, you do like to. secret gigs that you don't really promote? You just go in. Yes. For a, like a really small audience. Just yeah, I mean, com most com comics do that. So like you'll have your big show yeah. that you sell tickets for and it's whatever to 500, whatever to 100. And then you go, okay, let me just do the local scene Yeah. to see if these jokes actually work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if they don't work, because you have to test them. Testing. And you don't want to find out on the big show that yeah. it doesn't work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to show, you want to practice five or six different shows before you do it. You know, and sometimes... Your, your act is lucky where everything works. Mm. But chances are, if you talk about something that's part of your life and your 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 philosophy, it may not work. Mm. Because people have different philosophies. In comedy, it, you can clash with the audience with everything. Because yeah. telling observations is easy, but telling your beliefs are yeah. different. You know, like when I do the, when I do the God joke, you know, like Jesus and, <laughs> yeah. you know, in the Philippines, it's like, oh, oh yeah. And, they're like, oh. and then they laugh so loud because I, they know I came from a good place. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Don't talk about God. Oh my God. Shit. Okay. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> so close. <laughs> you know, because they have this thing, they have the, the lick dust point system. Yeah. What's have you, have you heard of lick dust points? Yeah. We, 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 we recently learned this about the, through our TikTok snippets. It's mm. like, we had this talk. We had like um, uh, uh, a bit where um, Transformers came to Earth and they landed into a Filipino household, mm -hmm. and then they would just turn into like a rice cooker. And Hilarious! Then, and then Nats would say he would they would turn into the Mother Mary. Oh my god! And then <laughs> the Santa Dino. And then, and then um, then we see the sort of comments. It's like oh. Um, minus lick minus lick points. points. This that and then we're like oh what is this and then we found out it's like it's like a point system. To that, get you to heaven. To get to heaven type mm. of thing. It's like you a know? demerit point yeah, on your life. They've, they've laughed yeah. at this yeah. bit. It's like, I'm, yeah. I've, I've run out of Ligtas points because I participated. I can't be saved, basically. Yeah, can't be yeah. Safe. yeah, so you, I can imagine the, the, the audience be like, oh, if I laugh at this, I'm losing points to get to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Type of thing. <laughs> I get I was like, that. Okay, yeah. okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah like, does, is, that, is there anything else that you learnt about the culture through your comedy, comedy yeah. kind of like how we learnt about Lick the Lick Dust points. points type of thing? Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, I don't talk about anything that's too racy or like... Um, less. Yeah, less like something stuff. that would offend them. Like if I made fun of God and Jesus, I would never do that. But if I did something... Like the most is the dirty material. Yeah. Because, like what I told you, the titas that send me messages is true. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Kamijan. I spell it with a J. You know? I was at your show last night. I was so embarrassed what you said. I could not drive home with my kids that night. 
I told them to take a bus. <laughs> we should have saved, saved money and watched Jokoi. It's 100% sure they say that because they're not used to a Filipino man talking like that. Yeah. yeah. If you're over 50, it doesn't exist. Under 50, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, Filipinos as a culture had had to fight for our own voice mm. and ex and let the older com Filipinos go, look, this is how we are now. Look, I, the hardest thing about being a Filipino is getting out of the child mentality of I have to respect my my parents and their beliefs. Mm. The truth yeah. is we have different beliefs. Yeah. And by the time you're 20, I don't care who you are, if your mom, your parents loved you or hate you, they kind of mess you up in the head because their belief systems, they're trying to infuse on you. Yeah. But when you get to your 20s and 30s, you go, well, that's not my same belief system. Yeah. It may not be religion. It may be just how you raise your children. Yeah. Oh, I'll spank. My brother, well, I'll never spank my child. My parents yeah. always spanked us. So they thought it was okay for to teach us to spank our children or whatever. Right. My brother was like, no, that's not my belief system. Yeah. So they had to respect that. And sometimes with older Filipino parents that are that move from the Philippines to North America or Australia or whatever, the UK, want to hold, want to control your beliefs mm -hmm. to a point where it's like you can't. You know, it's it, what it is is. They hold on uh, to control because it makes them feel safe. Yeah, mm. you know, but That's they true. really have to let us go, and it's hard for a lot of like I, even dating Filipino girls in the Philippines, mm. they stay at home with mm. their families until they're married. Yeah. yeah, so they have curfews. This girl's like thirty-eight. I have to go home at ten because I'll get in trouble by my mommy. Wow, you're thirty-eight. But to them, it's okay. Mm. But it's because we is, live this different life, yeah, it doesn't work in our culture to stay at home at 38. You'll fuck up your life. Yeah, yeah it's You'll true. never be an adult. You'll never get the things you're supposed to get. Mm. You know, it may work back in the day there. Like, it's my cousin. Oh, my God. She was living with my, my aunt until she was 40. Sleeping in the same bed back to back in Tabanok. Okay? Mm. In, in Cebu. Yeah. And at 40, my aunt goes, okay, get married, have children. What? Go outside, get married, and have children. And my cousin calls me and goes, my mom told me my whole life to stay away from boys. Why? Because they'll just take advantage of me. Now I'm supposed to allow them to take advantage of me now? Wow. And I'm like, what the fuck is yeah. that mentality? Yeah. So I go, yeah, I, well, you have to get married because your mom wants you to get married. So what are you going to do? She's like, I guess I'm going to go out dating. She would be crying and send me messages. Can you help come over? I go, what's wrong? Look at this text. Read it. I'm like, uh, uh. yeah, this guy's using you. How do you know? Because I learned that in grade 12. Yeah. should never had a <laughs> chance to grow up. You should have learned this in your 20s. Mm. Yeah. But she, her mom kept her coddled yeah. Yeah. for 40 years. Wow. I, I go now. She been she now she got used by like twenty guys, yeah. and now she figured it out. But it it came in a late age. A later age, yeah. You know, because yeah. you have to learn those things yeah. on the uh, in your twenties. You can't learn that in your forties. What the hell is that? You know. Yeah. So some of the, the the customs are holding on too long with a society that's changed. Mm. Right. You know, and that's sometimes a big problem with some of our people in the community that hold on. To control their children too much you know i was like that my my literally my parents my parents didn't want did my mom got in a we got in a, uh, an accident when i was six so my mom became a paraplegic so i had to take care of her my whole life until she passed away when i was 40. and my mom and dad never wanted me to leave because to so i could keep taking care of my mom which i understand mm. and i if i honestly when i look back i go i'll never change what i did yeah. I took I took care of my mom mm. until she died, right? Mm. But I couldn't do that to my children, right, right, right. Yeah, because I know you know at least with me, I found what I was going to be as a comedian at fucking eighteen. Mm. I already knew, so I, I could do that while doing what I was going to do. I mean, brother yeah. moved away from home when he was thirty, anyway. So I was the one taking care of my mom. I would never let my child do that, right? Because what would happen? It would stunt his growth. Yeah. Mm. And if he didn't know what he or she wanted to do for the rest of their lives, at 40, 
you can't figure that shit out. Mm-hmm. You're now lost in the real world. Yeah. You know, my dad used to play, you'd be like, he tried to uh, make me believe that I couldn't survive on my own. Yeah. You'd be like, uh, I'm like, dad, I'm like 40. I got to leave home. You think you could survive? You will die as soon as you leave that street. <laughs> I go, I leave there every day. God. I travel the world, you know? Like yeah. my dad kept forgetting I was in, in my late yeah. 30s and 40s. Like, yeah. I remember, because my mom would, when her later in her life, she would always go to the hospital like every week because she had b- problems with her body. So she he called me up and be like, um, oh, come home right now. And uh, because, and I'm like, I'm in Australia. Oh, oh. Okay, I thought you were down the street. Like he, right? He was always this human was around because around. that was his natural thing with me. You yeah, should wow. be around. Yeah, yeah. Or like, and then I'd fly in from somewhere around the world, and I'd get home at two in the morning, and then I would uh, pack, unpack, and then I'd have another flight at six in the morning. So I could only go home, repack, and then leave to whatever. Mm. I'll go to, after that. I go to go to like uh, London or something, right? right? And my dad would be like, he'd wake up, he'd be like, it's three in the morning. What are you doing up? Go to sleep. I go, what? I have a flight in three hours. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. He had to keep reminding himself that I was an adult. Right, right. Mm. Because they keep you as a child as long as they can because yeah. it's control. Mm. you know mm. and, and they have to realize you have to let us go yeah. yeah you know and sometimes it's hard for them too because they're lost in this world that's not philippines mm. and you're the closest thing of control they can get mm. yeah you know so it's a sad thing but it's what made them comfortable now my dad's like he gives me totally different advice now you know he's he's 78 my mom died 10 years ago he remarried a 38 year old my girlfriend was 42 at the time. I had to dump my girlfriend on fucking principal, okay? Because <laughs> there's no way he can beat me. No. <laughs> all, my, all my female... Um, <laughs> dude, all, my dad's a player, bro. And my, all my, but my dad took care of my mom his whole life. He had probably like one girlfriend before my mom. Yeah. So his whole life was one woman taking care of whatever. Yeah. And so now he was like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. And his, my mom and dad's best friends were the same age. They're all in their 70s. They had a, their best friends had a daughter that was in their, like, 38, whose husband was in their 50s that died. Right. So, oh, the, and my mom died. So they're like, hey, just come hang out, hang out with me and, and, and my dad. You know, like, so that couple had a daughter and my dad had was alone and they started hanging out. This is in Canada. Mm. And my she started liking my dad. Wow. And I used to go, how did you get a 30-year-old? He goes, you know, I was the cha cha champion in Philippines in 1955. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps bringing that shit up. Legend. You know, one time he got away. Fact, I'm not joking. Yeah. This cop pulled him over yeah. and he was Filipino. And then the guy just let my dad go. And I go, how'd you, how'd you let him go? How come he let you go? You know, I was the cha cha champion. In 1950. <laughs> you know, my dad used to always travel with a box of frozen bangos in his trunk. No. Because he goes, you never know when you have to do a trade. <laughs> what a hustler, I love it. Dude, at one time, we were in this, we, we were like, in, we, we were trying to buy jackets in this yeah. crazy Chinese, there was a Chinese uh, uh, warehouse. Right. There were all these leather jackets. And he, there was a $1,000 leather jacket. My dad, my dad loves long, cool, pimp jackets. Yeah. And he got it for 500 I go, how'd you get 500 you know that box of bungles? <laughs> <laughs> I trade it. <laughs> Jacket. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, because awesome. he taught me one thing. In life, there's a gray area, and that's where comedians live or people that podcasters. Mm. So there's no such thing as a definite answer. So here's an example. Most of the girls I've, like, some of the girls I've dated that are white, we'd go to malls and you know, you go to Best Buy or a big department store and you can't bargain at all. But if you see a kiosk with an Indian owner that's selling gadgets, you know, wires, you can go, hey, how much is that wire for the charger? Oh, that'll be a uh, $10. And then you'd be like, what if I get four? Oh, it's still $10. Yeah. Like, can you give me a deal? Yeah. And then, so I would do this in front of these girlfriends of mine. So like, wait, you can actually bargain in malls? 
<laughs> not every place. Yeah. You have to know. Because yeah. mm. my ones? dad taught me that. He's like, you, you'd never pay full price when you see somebody has a mom and pop shore yeah. store. Mm. They'll always give you a discount because they need the money. Yeah. You know, the mm. big, Cold big breakers. fucking businesses, no, they don't give a shit. Yeah. They're multi-billion dollar businesses. They don't need that. Yeah. The small mm. mom pop shops, they can give you three wires for four bucks each. Yeah. You know, just because they know, my dad knows the the gray area is where we live. Right, right. You know, there's nothing definite. Yeah, imagine going to Macca's and being like, four Big Macs. I know. How, what if I get it? <laughs> I got the box of bungos. <laughs> <laughs> right. That would work in the Philippines. <laughs> get a happy meal out of that. Uh, it'll end up on the menu, huh? <laughs> bungos burger. <laughs> it's just that one Macca's in the Philippines. It's the one. <laughs> I've been trying to sell this for about 50 years now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. Right? It's, instead of a milkshake, it's vanilla milkfish. Oh my God. <laughs> well, if you go to McDonald's in the Philippines, they have so many different stuff we don't get. Yeah. They have like. Like rice. They have <laughs> rice. Yeah. yeah. So much. They have uh, longanisa, tocino. Yeah. 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 You wow. know, you can, you can get like a uh, chicken, like a Jollibee kind of chicken in mm. McDonald's, you know? Uh, I love like McDonald's in different countries. It's always the, in Japan. They have the teriyaki burger. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah, like it's just a little different from everywhere else. I love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's funny because my cousins' cousins are here from Manila. Oh, nice. Uh, and they uh, they he took them to KFC, mm-hmm. and then they were looking up at the menu and they're like, "Where's the rice?" Hilarious. And they were, they were oh, like, nah. oh, they would not do that here in Australia. You, you got to bring that from home. Yeah. 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 Go to the nearest Chinese restaurant. Buy the rice there. Buy the rice there. Yeah. They'll look at you weird, but you yeah. know, you can go there and then you go to KFC. My day used to be so cheap in the in the 80s when he would go like, how come hamburger is 20 extra cents? I'll bring my own cheese. You know, like he, <laughs> <laughs> he would have cheese in the, in the car. Just get that, put the cheese Man, on This guy's car. got everything in his car. Oh, man. Oh, everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bangos, cheese, Bro, a cha cha champion trophy, <laughs> and a and a thousand dollar leather jacket oh, sitting yeah. in the back there. Yeah. He used to have like a crazy black Mercedes Benz that was stretched. Like he, so you know when my mom passed, he gave everything away. He didn't care about making money. He was just mm. like. Take it, take it, take mm. it. He gave away my mom's medical bed, twenty thousand dollars to oh, a dying shit. neighbor. Uh, oh, he, he gave yeah. away his uh, his uh, car to one of his friends for like two hundred bucks. He know. didn't want to remember any. He's one of those people that doesn't care about keeping. He's like opposite of hoarders. Mm. Mm. You know, he's like give it all away. It's like you, your favorite jacket, which I like. Hey. In a year, <laughs> we won't give a shit about this. And it'll be in a, wrapped up in a corner of my room in LA going, fuck, why did I pay 4,000 bucks for this? <laughs> in a know, box of bungos. With a bu- box of bungos. I should have brought a box of bungos. <laughs> that would be a fair trade. <laughs> dude, oh, box of that shit so much. Dude. <laughs> yeah, we used to make, I used to do, my dad used to sell, um, he used to teach us how to make bungos, bungos. Mm. So, um, the, you, we'd have tw- maybe 15 workers mm. and, and he'd be like and he would go whoever makes the fastest bonus bonus the fastest would get extra money mm. and I would always be like the fastest mm. like That's I would really make you know, and to the point I was just like you know what you can kill somebody with you could you know the TFC the, you know yeah, yeah, they should be a soap opera where like some woman wants to kill her spouse <laughs> and goes hey honey I bought you bonus bonus dying and he's like, oh, thank you. Okay, eat it. And he's like, mm. <laughs> you said it was boneless. <laughs> <laughs> you could kill people by putting those. You know how much bones? There's 600. Yeah, there's, yeah that's a Sorry, I just thought about Romeo menace. and Juliet. Oh, yeah. At the very end, instead of poison, you just get some Oh, bungles. my God. <laughs> That'd be the Filipino, Filipino version. <laughs> we got to make this video. <laughs> <laughs> It'd just be like, oh, like the skit. love of my Dude, life is can gone. Can we do that video? Like Next come in, we'll get a Filipino girl and one of us to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you know? And then instead of poison, we just get a bone, like a, a, a bungos with a big bone in it. Yeah. What'll be the two families? What's the line? The, the, the Montenegros. Wow. The Montenegros. Right. Well, yeah. And the Capunos. And the Messiahs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to sleep. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> to sleep or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dad every Sunday, man. <laughs> I'd hear him. I always, I would sleep. I always sleep in the basement, and then I would hear him upset. <laughs> I'm like, there he is with the bungos bones again. <laughs> the bungos bones. And then you could hear my mom. Look at you! Look at you! 
<laughs> Sometimes I get mixed up. I don't know if he's um, eating bangos or he's just changing the channel. <laughs> yes. <thing. laughs> you know what's funny? Uh, I, you ever hear? You ever hear? And you look around. Like I do the, that mm. video. I don't mm. know if you ever yeah. see the video yeah. I do. Mm. Yeah. Seen those? Right. Uh, I got caught the other day because someone opened a soda bottle, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, tss, I'm like. I'm like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I do that in every country. Yeah. It, it has a work all the time. Have you seen the videos I do? So mm, I have like yeah. ten videos of of I'm like, here I'm in Japan. Let's see, there's Filipinos. <laughs> <laughs> I do it all over the world. I'll I'll do these games like that. And oh, what race do you think I am? So it was in Japan. I was mm. like, okay, we're doing the new game called What Race Do You Think I Am? Old Japanese lady walking on the street in, in Tokyo, and she's like. And she's talking Japanese to my Japanese friend. And she's like, what race do you think he is? He's like, oh, Japanese, Okinawan. I'm like, why do you think he's Okinawan? Because Okinawans are fat, <laughs> <laughs> drunk, straight, straight up. up, right? And and they're dark from fishing. Oh, mm. man. And I go, okay, get the fat and the dark, but why am I drunk? And he goes, why is he drunk? No, 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 no. And he's like, oh, you know why? Because you're always walking around like this and you're never in sync with everybody. Mm. And I'm like, what do you mean? In Japanese culture, you have to be in sync with people walking in front of you or mm. mindful. So an example, oh, if you go to a restaurant, you have to file in from the right to the left. Mm. Where I would just go to the left because there's nobody there. Mm. And my Japanese friend's like, no, 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 you can't do that. That's offensive. I go, will I go to jail? He's like, no, it's just culturally that's very offensive. It's like swearing in public. Mm. Mm. I go, really? He's like, yeah. I go, why, would you, why do I have to file in next to the next person? He's like... They have a rule in Japan where they say, there's a saying in Japan, it's like, if you're the nail that's sticking out, we will hammer you into place. Wow, yeah. You know, and so it's like that. We're not allowed to laugh out loud in a train. So me and my friends were like, ah, and this conductor comes out and was like, you are too loud. You're not allowed to <laughs> laugh out loud. You are offending the ear. <laughs> they are offending the ear. Yeah. And we're like, what? Yeah, culturally, it's so weird when you travel because you yeah. you learn different mm. things too. Like in Japan, a lot of they go, don't smile when you meet somebody. You smile after. You you, you bow or shake hands and then you smile after. You don't go, hi. I go, why? Because that means you're stupid. Whoa. Oh. You know? And I'm like, oh, oh, I didn't know that. And then, but if you look at like the primates, it's same thing. You don't, they, they don't show their teeth because it means they'll fight you. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's it's an aggression. Wow. Mm. Or like uh, a lot of the Japanese humor, uh, when I go to Japan, they don't understand sarcasm because it's offensive. Because when I say, that's a nice jacket, mm. I'm saying the opposite. Yeah. I'm saying, that's not a good jacket. So when you say it to them, they're like, the, why don't you tell me it's a bad jacket? You just said it was nice. No, I'm in, I'm pretending. I'm yeah. not, it's not nice yeah. mm. when you start explaining yourself it's like yeah. okay the, it's sarcasm yeah, and they're yeah. like well just tell me the truth mm. yeah. so sarcasm doesn't really work out there because like here's an example we went to see a movie and the guy's like oh you're from Canada I go yes oh why are you here in Japan to find a husband like you and he's like oh no 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 <laughs> and I was like no I'm joking no joke about like they don't even though I'm being sarcastic and mm. joking yeah. they don't like it because uh. it's too real yeah they take everything from face value. Mm. And then you go to Australia, everything's sarcastic. Oh my God, it's so fucking sarcastic <laughs> yeah, around here. Yeah, yeah. I've seen two people friends, like have most sarcastic conversations and it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and I, lo I love it. Australia, to me, is so relaxed yeah. and so laid back and nobody takes too, too much offense. Here's the weird thing. The first time I was in Australia, ever, 2009, I had to do the, comedy, uh, the Sydney Comedy Store. Before that, on a Thursday, I had to do the regular, a show that was on a regular pop-up mm. bar. So I had to close the first half. And before my 20 minutes, the, the producer's like, get off, get off. I'm like, why? Just get off. I go, it's only 10 minutes. I go, hey, we're going to have a break. There's going to be another, the MC's coming back after 15 minutes. Uh, you guys enjoy the next headliner. So I get off. I'm like, why'd you tell me to start the show? And they're like, there's a fight outside. There's this guy that's on meth. I'm like, really? In Australia? Anyways. <laughs> Sarcasm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me that we are on this. <laughs> right? And I go, oh, what do you want me to do? It's like, this guy's a mess and he's beating up all the alt comics. So alternative comics are very, uh, they're not fighters. They're just nice, you know? Mm. And this guy was 6'3", muscle, 
beating up everybody. Ten, I'm pushing oh, the shit. door, and this guy's out cold. There was a comedian. He did the MC, mm. and I'm like, I can't push the door, so I push the door, and he's like, Oh my god, Jake's Fuck. out cold. Fuck and that. this guy's like, Who's next? And I'm like, Oh my god, Fuck. my first day in Australia. Mm. He rushes me, yeah. and I'm like, Oh, I like, I, you know, I, I'm like, I'm in shock. Yeah. Mm. This guy comes across the street, a normal bystander, bystander tackles him. So, and then the guy who's stronger than him throws him to the ground. He starts beating up the bystander. Oh, shit. And, I, I, and I'm like, oh, oh my God. And there's nobody awake. Everybody's out cold. There's 10 comics out cold. And after he stands up and I fucking tackle him, <laughs> use real jujitsu I've yeah. never used in 10 years. <laughs> Put him in an old Hicks and Gracie hold where you, you know, this one where Hicks and puts your arm behind your yeah. thing, holds this, you know, and I have him in a knee on stomach side position. Right, right. And he can't hit me. And he's calling me the N word for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you just pick any racial slang, and and I'm holding his arm back and he goes, "I'm gonna fucking hit you." And what? And then after that, I'm like, "What the fuck is happening here?" And everybody's watching from the crowd, yeah. and they're videotaping this. Wow. And nobody's helping me. And I go, "Can someone call the police?" And like, we've called them like ten minutes ago. They're across the street, and these two guys start walking with billy clubs, and I didn't know they had, didn't have guns here. Yeah, guns. And they're like. All right, mate. What you, what's what kind of move is that? They're asking me questions with my jujitsu, and I'm like, uh, it's an old Gracie move. What happened? I go, just fucking help me, right? <laughs> and they're like, all right, let him up. And I go, he's gonna start flailing. He's gonna punch. He's like, let him up. It takes out these two billy. These guys take out their billy clubs. I jump off, and they beat the shit out of this guy, <laughs> tie him up, and bring him into the precinct, right? Oh, wow. And I was like, this is my first fucking day in Australia. If this is my first day, I'm fucked for the rest of this tour. <laughs> but apparently the Australians that are crazy leave this country and give you guys a bad rep. <laughs> you know, so all the Australians I've met in America yeah. are insane. <laughs> and it's because you guys kicked them out. <laughs> It's a, it's a long flight too. Yeah. Because <laughs> everybody was like, you know, Australia was where British used to put the, the prisoners. Uh, prisoners. But <laughs> yeah, apparently it wasn't, uh, uh, Ruben was telling me, it was also political prisoners mm. that were not doing anything illegal in terms of, th of like thievery. It was the political prisoners too. Right. So, you know, but mm. there were definitely murderers and crazy people. 100%. Yeah. yeah but I, I think that Australia has a really good name when it comes to everybody likes loves Australians they're mm, nice yeah. but then there's those f those f few per people that are out there that are insane <laughs> <They're crazy>. <laughs> 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 they give you guys such of a not a bad rep but like hey watch out there's one one every 20 is a psychopath <laughs> It gives us a bit of an edge. Yeah, it does. And you know you need that. Yeah. You know what's funny though? Hearing that story, I know for all of us, even Ruben would, would, would hear that story and be like, yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds right. That sounds exactly You know, exactly um, I had a cu a cu my cousin went to New York and he's a he's a bigger guy. Like he's Filipino, but he's a bit bigger. But I, I think some dudes were about, like going to jump him. But then when he started speaking Australia, like with an accent, like an Aussie accent, they're like, whoa, what, what accent is that? And it's like, oh, I'm from Australia. They're like, whoa, whoa, now nah, let's, let's back up. <laughs> Cause they're like yeah. you guys, you guys are crazy. Like, yeah. I think it has a lot to do with the crocodile hunter. They're, yeah, they're like you guys fight crocodiles. <laughs> this is a knife. <laughs> like, Whoa. We, kill, we, we kill like dingoes and shit. And then like, you see Steve Owen just tackling yeah. uh, a crocodile. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, he's got like, Filipinos love knives too. Maybe yeah. they should be like a Bali songs, yeah. and we love fighting. That's why, like, you know, my dad was uh, karate. And, uh, he learned karate from his dad. Yeah. yeah. So he always knew. And then my brother and I. I started boxing, my brother, uh, and doing uh, wrestling, and my brother did actual kung fu. Uh, f f this is a f crazy ass story. I've never even told this ever. Oh wow! My brother uh, took Wing Chun, and we all laughed at him. We really did. He was he took it for like years, and all of a sudden there was this giant fight in New Year's. So my brother, uh, my my girlfriend, and my brother and his girlfriend were in, a, in the dance club, and um, this guy fought. Uh, Spilt a drink on my brother's girlfriend, and my brother's girlfriend fought his girlfriend, and oh. then my my brother, uh, his girlfriend got pushed by this guy, like oh. a tall six four, pretty big dude, and my brother uh, just knocked him out, and I was like still dancing, like what? <laughs> what move is that? You know? And then a, and then he saw a baton from his left or his right, and he blocked it and punched out of na just an instinct, yeah. which he learned from the wooden dummy. The reason yeah. why the wooden dummy has those two sticks is yeah. it helps your peripheral vision. Yeah. It was a cop. 
So he knocks out a cop, oh. and we're like, what the fuck? And so the bouncers knew us. So they took my brother and I and brought us to the back of the club, called the cab. We went back to the hotel. Yeah. And I was like, why the fuck did you knock out? He was like, so, and, and, and here's the craziest ass fucking story. Uh, I had to, uh, I remember my brother was training Wing Chun. And I had, I, he, he calls me, he goes, hey, I forgot to keep my, the keys to the house, just drop it off at Sifu's house. So I drove to Sifu's house, never been there before. I go down the stairs, and there's a giant picture of uh, Ip Man, mm. my brother Sifu, Bruce Lee, wow. and another guy called Luxi Hing. They were the last three students before Ip Man died. Wow. Oh, wow. And my brother learned from the lineage of oh, Ip Man. Mm. And he goes, yeah, I, I, I go, how, how'd you even find this place? So my brother took Wing Chun from another person. My best friend growing up was, it was uh, practicing in that Ip Man place. And my brother and him, uh, my best friend, Doug Chang, were doing uh, Chi Sao, which is sticky fingers, right? And my brother's like, and my, my best friend's like, hey, my Sifu has a birthday party. I would love to invite you because I'm, I'm allowed to bring a friend, and then, you know, right? And so my brother went to the party, and he goes, oh, so Doug says you know Wing Chun. He's like, yes. Oh, show me your Chi Sao. And he's like, he's like, like, you know, like the Matrix when they're doing that? He's like, oh, you learned from uh, Simon. Wow. And he's like, how do you know Simon? He's like, he was my student. He always had this flaw, and now you have the flaw. Wow. And my, he goes, let me rechain you. Wow. Never charged my brother a dollar. This guy only did it for close friends of the family and good people. He was a teacher in University of Toronto. Holy fuck. Yeah. And so my brother learned Wing Chun from the lineage of Ip Man. Man so oh good. my God. Yeah. And, they, 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 and he would always ask questions about Bruce Lee. And Bruce Lee was a guy that only did it for seven years because he saw the flaw in Wing Chun, mm -hmm. which was too static. Where Bruce Lee got beat up by boxers, they do. They would never tell people this, but when Bruce Lee was practicing, he would always challenge other people in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. and eventually got beat up by boxers. Oh wow! And he's like, boxers just know how to fight because yeah. they do it every day. Their timing is impeccable. Where most martial arts stand up never really fight like boxers. Ever. They don't spar like that. Yeah. Wing Chun's very close to it, mm. but they don't. They don't do it in a way where it's to really hurt you. To really hurt you, yeah. Because you could break legs, you know. And so my brother had to learn, uh, uh, he learned Wing Chun, then we got into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, like which you, you guys do. Uh, oh, my brother was going just, to- Just don't. Just, 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 oh, yeah. I don't, I don't just, be just in box. case we uh, get into a gang fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just want to say it now that uh, I'm not uh, a for that. Just this guy, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Please, don't fight us. That's a, imagine that other podcast is like, yo, let's yeah, go. Yeah. It's a horrible There's a forum. challenge <laughs> match. Yeah. Right. Like, There's like, right, a uh, lineup that comes outside. No, 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 it's just this guy. My foot. <laughs> My foot, my teeth arms. You can't okay. bar, bar the teeth arm. For, for, for context, um, I'm wearing slippers because I He's dislocated my, my pinky toe Tell him doing jujitsu. My pinky toe got stuck in the sleeve of the other person. And so when I when it like it basically just pulled it out of the socket. Sometimes you just keep things to yourself. Listen, yeah. I, <laughs> but just I, say you got jumped by five black guys. No, it's so that. much more. <laughs> yeah, I got my. That's what you, my, that's what you <laughs> get for cutting all these sleeves from these shirts, bro. The sleeves, you know, they're Finally all got just, you back. You know, they they stick to their oh work. Sleeves are my nemesis. That's what they that's are. That's it, bro. So, <laughs> my God. That's um, Sorry, man. Yeah, so my we brother was, uh, he, he, he was looking, he would collect those martial art uh, kung fu magazines and he saw the Gracie Challenge. Yeah. So in the 80s, they had this thing called the Gracie Challenge where the, you get $10,000 if you beat any of the Gracies. And so my brother and I went to California and we didn't even think about it. My cousin lived across the street from the Gracie Academy in 1989, 1990. And around 91, we're like, hey, those are the legendary Gracies. So we actually witnessed, have you ever seen Gracie in action? So Gracie in Action was the catalyst to get UFC. It was basically oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. challenge matches for all different martial arts that would go to the Gracie Academy, and if they beat the Gracies, they would get $10,000. None of them won. They sold this uh, to CGA Sports, and CGA Sports started the UFC mm -hmm. with Horian Gracie as the owner. So we used to watch these challenge matches and we're like, holy fuck, Mexican gangsters would literally walk up with broken arms like, fuck, what the fuck was that? Yeah. And so we were like, hey, can we try this? They saw us like, we're, you know, I was 18, my brother was 20, and we're like Filipino kids. And they didn't, they did not take us seriously. And they're like, and me, I'm like, 
at 18, I'm, I was wrestling and doing boxing, and I, and, and I took off my shirt to fight, and they're just like, <laughs> I was like, fuck, let me put on my shirt. <laughs> and the hoist literally says, you could do anything you want. So I picked up hoist, put him down, and right before I punched him, I woke up. Wow. He had me in a, he had me in triangle choke. Holy and my brother's like, I go, I wake up. I'm like, oh, hey, man, I just do that. He's like, oh, but the same way your brother's getting choked out by Hickson. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh. And so we trained with them for like six years. That's crazy. That's nice. yeah. I saw that photo you showed me yesterday yeah. with the jawline and everything. Oh, the jawline when my hairline was down to here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, so we did jiu-jitsu early on, like before, right. uh, even before the UFC, actually. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, so we, we met the whole family. Wow. So nice, you know. Yeah. They would uh, they would make us shakes, you know, because there's only like thirty students, forty students, and then the day after UFC, line up across the building, around the yeah. building, right. like, we can't even get in. Yeah, it was from twenty dollars a month to a hundred. Yeah. massive yeah. at the time. Nah. Dang, that's crazy. 1980, 1990, two, three, yeah, nineties, nineties, yeah. Mm. Damn, I'm so, I'm so glad you thought that I did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, bro. <laughs> hey man, I, I thought you were, I thought you were the teacher. I did not. I did Brazilian barbecue. Ooh, no, that's yeah, even yeah, better. better. <laughs> oh, I love that. Brazilian barbecue is so, so good, the man. The technique is um, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's just this with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> this is the technique. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's funny. I put that meat in the chokehold. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I was this close to accepting. I was like, yeah, maybe I do. <laughs> I was this close to believe. You should wear like a jean gi. Like that almost <laughs> looks like a gi that's made of jeans. That'd be so cool if you rocked that and turned like, look at this loser. Walk with jeans. He's the right away. Like a Brazilian yeah. dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Here for the kumite. Because you see the black black geese, blue geese, yeah, but jean gi? Jean gi. Jean gi. Bro, it's right. difficult Bro, enough to it. like training in the gi. It's so rough on your hands, yeah. too. Oh, like, yeah. and the, the ones back in the day, the old Gracie ones were loose and mm. soft. Now they're so tight yeah. and so hard to grab. You, you need really strong uh, grips. Yeah. And most Brazilian Jiu Jitsu teachers, after 20 years, have arthritis. Yeah. Most oh, of my of friends have arthritis now. Right, because they you do this too much for your whole life. You know, your right hand knows what I'm talking about. But <laughs> <laughs> it's like keep moving them. <laughs> it's, 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 because his thing is like it's rough now. It used to be really smooth now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all chafed. <laughs> <laughs> Just grabbing the leftover foreskin from the oh. like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, it Looks like a dead chicken. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Neck. Oh god! Oh man! Oh man! So, like, do you still do the fighting stuff now, or is it something that you just dabble in? Or just every time somebody attacks him, is really yeah. Good. And, yeah um, now I just carry a Bali song. No, I. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? I, I want to definitely get back. I got back into it um, a year ago, a little bit with Machado Brothers with Russell Peters, and then now I'm like, it's so hard to find a gym that you, you keep traveling. Yeah. So right. it's almost impossible to. What you gonna pay fifty bucks every time you go to a city to train for a day? Mm. You, you know, just go back to Australia and just yeah. <laughs> wait for the next person to run up to you. Well, the cool thing about <laughs> Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, it's in every country now. Yeah. You can go to anywhere, but you get. still it's better to find a gym mm. and get good at the gym because they still have the the natural Brazilian way is you cannot keep going to different gyms. Mm. It's almost offensive, yeah, because you, know, you have different masters. You can't be a masterless no, right. in Brazilian yeah. Jiu-Jitsu. You kind of have to stay at one place and get better there. They used to do a thing. I think it was like, I think it's called uh, storming dojos or do dojo storming, where if you wanted to prove yourself, you'd go to a different dojo and then challenge them. Oh wow! And, and it's like Pokemon. It's almost yeah. It was almost like that. That when you challenge them and you'd have to beat them to try to, you know, go up a level or something like that. Wow. It was Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Well, I think Filipinos are naturally fighters because we, you know, like. You know, lap or lap. like the whole mm. the whole culture was a, was a fighting culture before yeah. you know before, yeah. Spain came and took over everything. Was yeah. it like a warrior race and we had tattoos? Yeah, yeah man. Versus the Alibata or... tattoos yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. Like we mm. still. And then when I was in the Philippines in Cebu, they were telling me so. There's a big uh, statue of Lapu Lapu mm. with two uh, knives or like two swords. And then the story is that Magellan came 
after the fourth time they were trying to take over Philippines and they couldn't. So they had, yeah. they're like, you know, they, they hid in the jungles and they slit our necks, you know, and it was so hard to fight these Filipinos. So they took, they go, Magellan goes, okay, I'm going to come, I'm going to kill Lapu Lapu. So he was on a boat or his galleon or whatever. And Lapu Lapu was on the beach going, okay, we're going to fight. And this guy's wearing armor, the, the Magellan. And he jumps off the ship and he drowns himself because it's too much armor. <laughs> and Lapu was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I wanted to kill somebody. Yeah, today. So that Come is on. actually written in scriptures that, in the Philippines. But again, whoever writes history owns a pen. Yeah. That's and so in Spain and Portugal, they're not going to write that. They try no. it differently, yeah. They're like, no, they battled on the beach for two hours and they both stabbed each other at the same time. This ain't fucking The Last Samurai. Like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> Tom Cruise come out of nowhere. Yeah. And then Tom Cruise came and, and then Batman came, you know? <laughs> So the apparently the, fi, the the not the truth but what is written is Magellan killed himself. He, killed, killed himself. <laughs> he drowned. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could tell we're not so far. Look at Pacquiao. You know, like, come yeah. on, man. Mm. That guy. Who in history is a boxer that's that nice? Mm. Mm. You know, he's just that's a Filipino. We're the nicest people, and we're the fucking crazy <laughs> fucking fighters. Yeah. We're like both extremes, yeah. first and fifth gear. There's no talking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's almost like a stereotype in, in Filipinos. That it's like the Filipino struggle, right? And I think that's kind of, that comes from uh, as an extension of that. We're also fighters because you fight through the struggle. Yeah, you fight through and it's natural in us to fight. I think, uh, like, you know, you, you grow up in. I don't know where, where you guys when you grew up. Where Filipinos always had gangs. There was mm. always like some kind of gang yeah. related thing like growing up there's always don't go to the filipino gangs because there's always even in canada and america they're always that mm. yeah you know um you know it's funny i was in uh, labuan which is an island outside of malaysia and they were uh they're descendants of headhunters and they look filipino exactly and i'm like so you guys are actually like historically we're all headhunters and if you go to the museum, you see the heads. And I go, do you guys have it? Do you ever have like an, a feeling of like, fuck, I feel like cutting off a head right now. And they're like, all the time, bro. I go, what do you do? We do guillotines. We do jujitsu. So they, they go, when we feel like they go, they fight in that thing called uh, one FC. Yeah, yeah, one championship is fucking, fucking amazing. Mm. Filipinos in that. I, really? Who's the, who's the top guy now? I know there's Rotan, I, there's keeps, a Thai kickboxer, and then there's like a bunch of, but I see a few Filipinos out there too. Yeah, there's like these three brothers. I can never remember how to pronounce their names, right. but it's it's like, um, yeah, Ro Rotan is like, a, he was, um, that name was going around for the longest time, but yeah. right now it's like these three Filipino guys from Mindanao. Really? From yeah. Mindanao? And it's one of those they're ones Muslim. where you kind of, oh, bro, fucking, you see them, wow. yeah, dude, I gotta like see it's shit. brutal. And they, these guys are ripped, and you, and every time I watch one of those reels on Facebook, I, I I can't help but think this is what Filipinos used to be yeah. back in the day, you know? When, yeah, yeah. When Magellan came about, this is what he was yeah. trying to fight. Or you know Mark Munoz? Mm. Mark the Smashing Machine, Munoz, the Filipino yeah. Smashing Machine? He came to one of our shows. Actually, Joe Coy was headlining the show. This was before Joe was Joe, but big. And Mark Munoz came to our show, and I was dogging him like in the front row like crazy. <laughs> and he was like, oh, man. And then he hung out with us after the show. Oh, yeah. Wow. And he's a top wrestler. And I, and I was like, hey, man, um, can I try to take you down? And we're like, on, we're like outside on a, on a lawn. Like, it was like grass. Yeah. And we're all drinking a bit. And, dude, this guy just, oh, man. He got you straight away. Yeah. I, he, his arm drags. Just, I'm um, in the air. Wow. wow. Yeah, and I asked him about the fight. He had a fight with, he won against this um, Hawaiian guy that was tall, skinny, I can't remember his name. But the, if you watch the fight, the Hawaiian guy uppercuts him, and he's out. Mm -hmm. And he just starts pounding the guy for no reason, and he was out. But his yeah. natural body, yeah. and, he, and, then, and he won. So he, he's telling me the story. So I, all of a sudden, so I win, and I walk to the dressing room, and I'm in the dressing room, and Nogueira, who's, you know Nogueira? The, um, he's a, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighter, goes, yeah. hey, bro, good fight. And he goes, no, I'm getting ready to fight. Oh, oh shit. He was, yeah, and he goes, he no. got knocked back to like yeah. half an hour ago. Yeah, and he goes, and he's telling me this going, I thought I was getting ready to fight. 
And, he, and then Nogueira was like, no, you just fought and you knocked him out. He's like, no, I didn't. I, Wait, I'm getting ready to fight. And he goes, okay, I'm going to call the doctor. Fire. Doctor comes in, shows him the video of him winning. He's like, what? That whole thing was erased. Was he concussed? He was because, concussed, but he wow. said um, he didn't remember anything. Mm. Yeah. So what happened was, he goes, that was just my Filipino spirit fighting. Fire, so it was, man, that's was crazy. just blanked out blanked in out. fighting. And he was out. He was out. Like, if you see the video, he's just like this. Whoa. It's muscle like, memory. Yeah, by that, by that muscle memory. And he goes, honestly, that was just Filipino spirit. That's, was, uh, that's scary. Man, that's goosebumps. Like, that's mad. Yeah. Isn't that fucking crazy? Oh, shit. Let's try it. Yeah. Punch me. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, oh, he's oh. like, how come he's hard? My spear is so, so horny. I never got laid in four months. It's porn hub spear. It's a Filipino spear. Right yeah. 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 You wake up, it's like, I'm going to go have a wank. And like, you already did. Here's the video. My spear is Filipino spirit right now. <laughs> My spirit's coming out. <laughs> it's wet. <whip. laughs> I thought my spirit was dry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh that explains the new shorts. That's great. Oh, <laughs> I think we all got something like that there. There's a there's because we're all islanders. We're all fucking. Mm. We have like some kind of. Um, an innate, uh, uh, I don't know what it is. It's like a fighting. It's just a, mm. it's a natural fighter that. Oh, you know, you can tell when we snap. Mm. You yeah, know, when a Filipino true. snaps, you it's back away because yeah. mm. that's just the it's the spirit that's like, I need to fuck something up right now. <laughs> yeah, I need to cut off a head. Yeah, <laughs> I need to cut off a head or jerk <laughs> off. <laughs> you know, I think maybe both. I think even if, I think even if people don't consider them fight some, themselves fighters, like Filipinos don't consider them, themselves fighters, they're competitive as well. Oh yeah, so yeah. much. Like Raf yeah. is the one of the most competitive people that I. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Sometimes when I get the urge to like, you know, you know, fight something, I just get the karaoke on. Get the score hundred. Just calm me down. For this, this, guy, this guy's on his tenth song, and we're like, "Bro, he, this is ten songs in, in a row already." And he was like, "I'm mic. just getting ready to do my first one." <laughs> that, that's what I love about Philippines. Every Uber driver, right, or Grab, they call it Grab out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blair's slow jams from the eighties. Yeah. Oh, yep. yeah. You know, it's amazing. Like you, you hear all the hustle and bustle. You're obviously in your car. And then you'll hear like an 80s, you know, <laughs> slow jam. Rise in the morning sun. And he's singing it perfectly. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, I'm shit. like, how come Filipinos don't have accents when they sing? I told my dad to live your life through song because he has no accent. He sounds like Frank Sinatra when he sings. <laughs> he's like, just order McDonald's away. Good <laughs> have a, a Big Mac. <laughs> Can you give me a Big Mac? <laughs> I think a lot of like uh, the Filipino parents, uh, especially the dads I knew growing up, tried to assimilate themselves in the American and North American culture so much that they would have this weird hybrid Filipino accent that was mixed with an American accent. Yeah. Mm. So they'd be like, so my dad's, my, one of my dad's, uh, my friend's dad would be like, I sleep over the house. Okay, guys, turn up the TV, shut it up. <laughs> I think they would try to sound American, but it would sound worse. Shut it up. Shut it up. That's similar to you. You gotta figure out what part of America Hello. is from. Nah. Like you think they're almost white? <laughs> Hello. My, 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 friend, my best friend Omar, uh, his parents were so religious that when he got in trouble, this is what the, you know when you had to listen to the beep and you press one, two, or three? Yeah. You were like, Bling. They'd be like, <laughs> that was the worst. <laughs> bling, 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 I'm scared. <laughs> it's like I just got my first pube. <laughs> bling, bling. They'd be like, hello, you've reached the Salvosa residence. If you want to talk to Oscar, the owner, press one. If you want to talk to wife, Maria, press two. If you want to talk to Omar, the son, do not press anything because he's busy repenting. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. And then they made their basement into a full fledged church. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you go to the basement and they had a they had the very first uh laser trick wire. So if you went through it and your your leg went through it, you hear oh, 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 oh. Like, wow. and you're like and then Jesus would light up, you're like, ah, <laughs> Whoa, that's that's so hot hot. Yeah, it was so scary. They would have like, they would buy the Mary that would 
would cry water. Oh, oh shit! That's yeah. yeah, but they would. You it was it was a one you would sell. Like Trump would sell this. You know, yeah. it was he would plug it in and then they go okay, add water so the tears would come out. And you're like, that's not. You ever have like the we we would have this a lot growing up in Canada where the, the, all the Filipino community would be like go to this forest we saw Jesus and so. 500 Filipinos would go there and they're like where oh this woman has uh, was kneeling and there's a face I'm like that's a mud yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the face of Jesus and you're like oh, okay I can't say anything because I'm blasphemous if I question yeah. I go that looks like Scooby Doo <laughs> like that's not <laughs> See, we're gonna of, get we're gonna in trouble for that joke. Yeah, 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 Link those points for Link those points. <laughs> Minus <laughs> Link those points. You need to go to church. Gonna church. I'm gonna go to church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to well, church. this looks like a church. They, actually, actually, <laughs> it is a church sometimes. It is a church. They do. They have. Um, uh, they have a church that uses this sometimes. Oh they, really? Church, yeah. Yeah. Do you guys still go to church on Sunday? <laughs> Don't answer the question if you want no viewers. <laughs> <laughs> All the Filipinos are like unsubscribe. Oh, I know. I used to carry a rosary in my pocket and yeah. then a porno mag in the left. It was too bad. It was. For, I remember balance, doing it. Right? Yeah. 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 I love. I love how Ron asks us, "Do we still go to church on Easter?" <laughs> no one said it's Easter. It's Easter. Today's Easter. Today's Easter. Today's Easter. <laughs> oh my God! We all went. Oh, we're all going to hell today. Oh, we do jujitsu. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Rolling around with men again. <laughs> <laughs> Panty. <laughs> oh man. Every every now and again, like sometimes I'd, I'd go with my parents to to church, but yeah, not as not as regularly as I as I used to. But. No, my mom does YouTube church. Oh, you can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get a new episode every Sunday. My wow. My, one of my mm. one of my cousins is actually a priest, and so his mom will send me his like homilies every really every and you just every. watch it while you do wash the dishes and stuff like you yeah. can yeah and really cool i watch it every now and again i'm like that's my cousin wow yeah. so you watch it on the computer you could actually have it on a computer yeah oh wow yeah. and then you could email and then have pornhub okay because <laughs> <laughs> life is about top to top still like <laughs> <laughs> this episode is called bustos <laughs> <laughs> I get too paranoid about that shit. If this is like, if I'm doing church on the internet and stuff, I'll just close like old tabs with yeah. bad shit, bro. Yeah. Like, Jesus is watching through this webcam. Well, yeah, yeah. I, don't care. I, don't, I don't care if the government there is, is a webcam. but Jesus now. Yeah, I told all the hookers to go into the bed. <laughs> Guys, don't know why. <laughs> Jesus, you <what>? paid us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jesus is secretly doing the algorithm for you and stuff. Oh my God! You got to watch out. So. <laughs> oh man! Uh, but hey, happy Easter to everyone. Happy, yeah. happy Easter. Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yeah. <laughs> How's your eggs? <laughs> oh my God! This is the most Tito thing to say. Oh, yeah. hey, how's, how's your You got bulbo yet? <laughs> You got bulbo one or two hairs. <laughs> How come Filipino uncles are so bustos, man? Yeah, that's so interesting. You got in blue movies? What are you talking about? I'm four. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They have a blue movies? What the hell's a blue movie? You know? That one? The blue movie. My uncles used to come in. I was like seven. Do you know, where's your dad's blue movies? I go, well, I don't know. Look at the VCRs. Like, even look at the VHS. Yeah. And be like, oh, there it is. Boxing. Because my dad would disguise <laughs> all knows. the porn with different names, like boxing, Young and the yeah. Restless, you know, like. Vo boxing volume 12. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I remember I was in Dubai yeah. in 2001, and uh, I had, uh, I brought like porn DVDs, you know, because mm. before YouTube or Pornhub. And so I go over there, and then, you know, they went to check, and they're like, what's this? Right? Oh, yeah. I told you this story, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know if I should say it, but it was like. <laughs> that was good. You yeah. should say it. Like, all right. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, there was a, a the, the cover of the DVD was a white girl that had uh, eight penises <laughs> jizz on her, and uh, that was the, their Filipino spirit. Yeah, on her. All, all the spirit. She was being blessed, <laughs> and she's and they're like, "What is this?" And I'm like, "An octopus." And uh, so they handcuff me and put me in jail for six hours, and I'm there beside a guy who's smuggling cocaine who's looking at me like, "You're disgusting." <laughs> Bringing this food to our country. How could you do this? I'm like, you're smuggling cocaine in teddy bears, assholes, fucker, right? And they have to call the Canadian consulate. Mm. And then they're like, no, it's legal. He can bring, he, he goes, oh, okay. So they had to watch every porn. Oh, wow. To make sure. Six hours. They came out sweating. <laughs> and, and the girl put everything in a bag and she gave it to me like this. 
She didn't look at me. She's like, she couldn't look you in the eye. After just leave. leave. <laughs> just leave you and your fifth. And I was like, come on, you want some? <laughs> <laughs> Watching a one hour movie in six hours is crazy. <laughs> How do you watch it fast forward? <laughs> it's crazy, yeah. man. Because yeah, yeah, the VCR so. porn was the hard one. Because what happens is like, oh, you'd yeah. watch your porn and then you put it away. Mm. And then, and then sometimes I put it, and I'm like, "Hey, somebody watch this," because yeah. oh. they're at another part where I left. You gotta it. rewind it. Yeah, you gotta rewind it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, "Oh man, is it my dad or my brother?" Yeah, that's awkward. <laughs> and they kept it in the part. You know, where, uh, they were having sex on a farm, and then for some reason they would zoom up a horse's face. <laughs> I'm like, "Why would you?" Ah! <laughs> B-roll. Yeah, the B-roll of the face. Uh, if you finish while it's showing the horse, you thought. Oh man! Yourself. You ever watch like the hey. '80s Filipino porn? Your dad parents is down. He's always on a that. boat, like a, a raft that's almost sinking. <laughs> you know, it just flies. <laughs> you know, and it's it's, such a, it's so bad quality Betamax. <laughs> you know, and she doesn't. She's always in there. I don't want. Come on! <laughs> it's always like. You can't do the, the, that yeah, porn today. It's like the, talks the like music is distorted. It's always like a doctor that's disgusting. <laughs> remove your panty. I have to check you for cavities. <laughs> and the, the audio is like the, the voices are dubbed in. Yeah, because <laughs> you can tell it's dubbed in. It's like take off your panty. Panty. <laughs> 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 and then at the end they, they have this romance for some reason I bought you flowers <laughs> thank you wiping her eye <laughs> who would watch oh, that fuck. shit I think I want a session oh. dude <laughs> Filipino <laughs> porns in the this? 70s <laughs> but that's exactly what I, that's what exactly what the movies looked like in the, back then as well yeah it was I know it was just like it, literally it was in a raft like in the jungle like, they didn't have a hotel room <laughs> okay, we're, there's a dark alley. We have four minutes. <laughs> Can you finish? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the Tito going, Billy, send more. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you ever watch like TFC? I remember they had the TFC, uh, yeah. uh, what do you call it? The, the soap Tell operas? Yeah. Right, right. Oh, my God. So, so yeah. OA, man. Mm. Yeah. It's always like, there's always like a, there's like a family in a park. And then there's like, where's, where's, G, where's the BB? Where's, Where's my Anna? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you see the baby running to the street, and then you hear a car, yeah, and yeah. then a, and a ball in a shoe just rolls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my kid. And then the next scene, he's in the hospital. I'm okay. <laughs> You just got hit by a Mack truck. <laughs> Your foot flew off. <laughs> oh, fuck. They make um, those in four minutes, and they're. 30 minutes mm. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, we nice. have to do a fake video of tsc we should with bar. the bungos the killing the spouse of the bungos. Oh, bar. that's it bar. yeah, yeah. We, we should oh man <laughs> we have to <laughs> that'd be it has to be dramatic as hell zoom ins and everything yeah. bar. let's get a hot mestizo yeah, 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 yeah let's do it yeah. let's do it <laughs> <laughs> and a slow motion in the <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, do that I'm next time. I'm gonna <laughs> next time. I'm gonna we go down and a woman do this. <laughs> <laughs> what? There's bungos here. <laughs> I, I, love it, it, I thought it smelled fishy. Oh <laughs> shit! <Damn>. Cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Need to get some water when you're choking. It's like too big or not too big. Oh, yeah. <laughs> too small <laughs> or not question. too small. <laughs> <laughs> too soft or not too soft. <laughs> oh man! Oh, bro, this is hilarious. Oh, bro. <laughs> Where are you going next after this? Yeah. Uh, Portugal. Yeah. Portugal. So hey. you're going all the way to the other side of the yeah, world. Yeah. So man. I'm gonna go to. Well, my stopover is Thailand for three days. Ah, <laughs> get AIDS. Get AIDS. <laughs> A little bit, and then <laughs> <laughs> right? High five for it. <laughs> so stupid. Just a little bit, enough to lose weight. <laughs> you know, a little bit of aid. 
<laughs> help the body. <laughs> you know, just a cure. Just pill. Just a cure. Else. You don't oh, need man. rubbers. Stop, dude. <laughs> Go raw. <laughs> That's pure fucking Tito. Oh, you know, as I get older, I'm not scared of AIDS because this is a cure. <laughs> Just take one shot of patties. <laughs> <laughs> the VIX. Oh, yeah, VIX. VIX. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It sounds exactly like Oma Tito's. Yeah. yeah. VIX curing AIDS is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Portugal, and then Spain, and then Italy, and then I do Manchester, London. Are oh, you doing Europe? Yeah. yeah. Europe. So my last one is uh, Dubai uh, in Alaska. So before Dubai wow. is London, Manchester, uh, Rotterdam and Amsterdam. Yeah, wow. Mm. Yeah, so there's a Filipino community out there that they contacted me, so I'm like, oh man, I get to see another another of culture of Filipinos in other countries. Yeah. 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 And they love to bring me out to like the food. Like they're like, yeah. That's yeah. dope, man. That's okay, so you, have you tried That's Filipino food in all over the world type of thing? Pretty much. You mm. know, and everything's a little different, you know, mm. like, because... I don't know what it is, but with, like Filipino food in Thailand has a little bit of Thai taste to it, mm. you know. And you know, so Filipino food is always different wherever you go. They they have the main ingredients, but then there's something there in the in that city that actually yeah, smells mm. a little, it tastes a little different. Yeah. Outside of the Philippines, where's the best Filipino food? Oh yeah, man. Outside of the Philippines, um, I would say. Vegas is fucking crazy. Yeah, because right? yeah. wow. yeah, the, there's so many Filipinos that live in Vegas. Let's go, mm. boys. And, and there's the only place I've seen a Filipino buffet, like buffets, right. where, yeah, where totally they have cool. lechon at the end. Oh. And, and I'm not joking, it's like four spreads of food. Wow. Like, I mean, of trays. Like, it's not right. just one. It's like over 200 items. Or maybe not 200, maybe like 50 items easily. Mm. You know? Uh, so a lot of the food that we get in North America and Australia... Uh, is only a percent of what they have there because not all the stuff is transferable. Yeah. Right. Through yeah. Culturally, too. A lot of people don't like certain things. Yeah. So what they bring in North America is the standard sisig and, you know, apertada and adobo and, you know, different. But then Vegas has more mm. than just... A, like, it's not as... Like, Philippines buffet is insane in the Philippines. Have you yeah. been to a Filipino buffet? Yeah. yeah. Viking? Yeah, yeah Viking. Holy shit, shit. Yeah, If it's your birthday, the whole fucking crew comes out and dances. Oh, mm -hmm. is that the one where they do the... Yeah. Oh, is that that ninja dance? They do the ninja dance. They do yeah. all that stuff. They, wow. Well, they yeah. put a Viking hat on you with the holes oh, and everything. Cool. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing better than Filipino food in the Philippines, though. Mm. Yeah. 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 That shit's so crazy. Like, it's those side joints. It's like somebody's window that you're buying food <sighs> from. And yeah. it's like that family's specialty is that one dish. Yeah. 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 Bro. yeah. Like they, so they brought me to um, a restaurant that had all different types of pancit. So they had palabok and canton and but and then some stuff we've never had before like they, right. you, the palabok they had four different palaboks wow, thick palabok. thin noodle a soupy version right oh. yeah, you yeah. know so it was all different but like they had so many different uh versions of the same dish mm. yeah you can't beat my mom stuff. my mom's known as the palabok lady really? from this area so like Filipinos around here will order food from different families, mm -hmm. and my mum's the palabok lady. Really, oh. and she does the thick one. It's kind of that's like my favorite. The gravy, like the very saucy kind Dude, of stuff. Dude, next time I'll come over and get well, for sure. See, this is the thing. I've grew up on on that palabok, <clears throat> but like from time to time, like I'm after that powdery thin noodle, and yeah. it kind of makes me feel like I don't know. It's cheating? going behind my family. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's like when I go to another... taboo another, about it. Yeah. I know what you feel because when I do another cha-cha champion place to my dad, <laughs> I feel like I'm cheating on my dad. <laughs> when I massage uh, another man's legs, <laughs> I'm like, this, this, this doesn't right smell the same. Right. This, this, this boy smells totally different. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> From massaging legs, uh, like, have you ever noticed that Filipinos' calves are just Amazing. another level? Why is that? I think it's because we have so many hills. 
Miami, <laughs> you know? We had to walk everywhere. Well, the, the, I asked a question to an old Filipino farmer, and he goes, because when the cattlebell died, we had to put the harness on and do it ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> and they just passed down. The calves just passed yeah. down from generation We're, to generation. That's why, like, Filipinos, don't show your dick. Show your calves. <laughs> just, <laughs> I said, bro, hey. you know what we should <laughs> do? Because, you know, in hip-hop music, they talk about ass a lot. Yeah. We should talk about calves, calves. bro. Mm, just twerking yeah. with your calves. Legs. You know, yeah. and it's so well known that even uh, white Canadians that are comedians talk about Filipino calves on stage now mm. really yeah, yeah because a lot of them play hockey and a lot of them do sports and they're mm. like what is it with filipino calves they're like popeye calves yeah <laughs> like you ever see pacquiao his yeah. power comes from his calves yeah like yeah. they said his yeah. his calves give him the power so he's got to be filipino oh yeah, yeah, pacquiao? yeah. yeah. i mean i thought he, he said popeye be. but <laughs> popeye <laughs> he is for, for sure he's a sailor <laughs> popeye. Popeye is because like you know the sir he, mix a lot song baby got I mean, like, baby yeah, got back yeah, yeah, we call it baby we got, got calves, calves. Yeah. Yeah. at the start it'd be like oh my god filipino girls have calves too yeah yes. like, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, bro. Yeah. You know, I like big calves and I cannot lie. She's a little <laughs> in the middle, but she got much calf. <laughs> oh, yeah. They All you, the noise and open no eyes. Yeah. <laughs> well, Korean girls have big calves too for some reason. You, know, you ever see Koreans? They have like yeah, big yeah, calves. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's a, a more of an Asian thing. Maybe it's yeah. Asian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they do. Uh, you know what I noticed as well? Japanese girls, man. But they hide that in those ankle warmers. Oh, like, yeah. They what's do. Thing? I don't even you know. You know, those like, they look a, like scrunchies that they keep on warm legs. And it's like oh, socks for your calf. Oh, but the, the feet are still out. Is okay, that, is that right? yeah. So they just cover the calf, but their feet are out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Garcia, yeah. like when they find a, when he finds a an ankle warm on the ground, he sniffs it a bit. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. big calves. Oh Japan man, go about three miles. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, it's a phenomenon because like. Like you don't even have to work out your calves. No, you you'd get them. Like I tried to like not touch my calves. Like I do every body part in the gym except, except calves. calves. Mm. Yeah, and then then um, I remember some, one of my friends was like, "Hey man, your calves are getting small," and I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> I want Indian calves. <laughs> <laughs> They're just faster." <laughs> This stuff is not good for sprinting. They hit each other on the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like two balloons. It rubs against. <laughs> you ever see Filipinos that have giant calves? It looks like a fucking snake that swallowed a gazelle. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, look at those fucking calves. Too much calf. <laughs> too much calf. Too much calf. Oh, man. Look like Ninja Turtle calves, eh? Yeah, Ninja Turtle calves for sure. Instead of having like you know how women get the BBLs, yeah, we should that be that do that thing. You can get Filipino calves if you want to. We just get them installed. Hey man, like, yeah, like, yeah. So when like I die, I'll I'll, I'll I'll donate my calves. You could, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's some white person yeah. with like brown calves. I know. There's a black market for it. <laughs> you just give what it to it? like a Tanzania sprinter, like just <laughs> slow him down. Next thing is like, oh, those are fake. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if you throw a Filipino, will he go upside down the water or just, <laughs> <laughs> just start floating? That's how you know. His <laughs> feet. Is it this? All you see is two big cows and a tiny little worm. What is that? <laughs> I thought you put the worm as the bait. It's a floater. <laughs> it's a floater. <laughs> All right. What happened? A piranha ate my teeth. <laughs> Just one bite, <laughs> <laughs> so fast, uh, bro. If it, if like a it, like a Filipino girl like would would wrap their legs around me, choking me out. Oh my god, triangle know, choke man. all day. And I'll be like, all right, cool. Yeah. This is the end. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is the end. Yeah. This is the way it's gonna I can, pull I can die happy now. You know, can die You'd happy. happily accept it, eh? Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing about my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Training. It can be really. Uh, to a really close body parts if you're not mm. when you first start you're like mm. oh man this guy's ass is gonna be in my face <laughs> <laughs> like you know yeah, like yeah. you have to not care about you have shit. to like you, there's the, the there's this probably like a stage of it where you just have yeah. to release all that thought yeah. in your head yeah because when you first start and again brazilian people men are very macho mm. and the last thing they think about is doing that kind of stuff but when it comes to fighting that's they don't even think about it Mm. Mm. you know they will grab an ass or you know to Mm. to get out of a move it's Mm. no big deal Mm. but when you first do it you're like oh too close yeah Mm. like well i didn't really care too much because i always wrestled but a lot of my friends that were not filipino they were like oh this is too much close Closeness, <laughs> you know. Unless they wrestle a girl, put him in a triangle choke, please. Yeah, that's funny. All day, 
<laughs> it's funny with everyone else that just like you're just tackling him and stuff with and then you're like baiting him with a, a jiu-jitsu move with filipinos you just bait them with intimacy i know <laughs> just touch him toughly i can't commit <laughs> i can't commit to you yeah. why are you massaging my legs yeah. Yeah. why are you kissing my neck and ruining like a joke <laughs> are you are you tap huh <laughs> why are you doing a smell kiss <laughs> <laughs> You're so homot, Anak. <laughs> They'll run oh, away, yeah. bro. Your oh, armpits. Um, Ask him. <laughs> that's why they. That's why it is kill and kill it, kill it. Because it's yeah. dangerous. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, 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 <laughs> the, wow, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Put your man. face in my armpit. Boom. Very intimate. That's, yeah. intimate that's, that's too intimate. Sure. That's too intimate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saving that for marriage. That's, oh, yeah. that's what they say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, yeah. So I wanted to do a segment. Just, just to like you know, to light in the mood. Even though we've been lighting the mood even more, because you're Canadian, I wanted to do Canadian things or people if they were Filipino. Okay, was that one second? So we've been doing this segment like throughout the throughout the whole podcast. We've done it with uh, turning rocks rock bands into Filipino things, and then we've uh, we also done R and B artists as Filipino things. Yeah. So it's just trying to like get some puns in 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 the it's like a pun in the thing. But the, the topic is Canadian things, and I've got a list. I've got a list, and we'll get start with that. And um, so we got Party Next Door. So Party Next Door is an artist, R and B an artist. So yeah. I've created the Filipino version, Karaoke Next Door. <laughs> mm. Have you ever woken up and you've noticed, even though they're not next door, they could be like a karaoke party going down the street mm. and it just goes on for the whole night yeah. right 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 yeah that's that's the inspiration for that yep we've got pamela anderson who's a canadian mm-hmm. is she yeah yeah she is, yeah, she is. so my one is pamela anderson <laughs> <laughs> shout outs to tfc with my and my kids when, when i was a kid pamela anderson pamela, pamela anderson and there's um alanis morissette who is a canadian um singer so we got Alanis Sus Mariosep. Nice. Yes. <laughs> or if you want to make it more concise, you can go Alanis Mariosep. Right. Yeah, that's a good one. Alanis. Or Alanis my poet. <laughs> Alanis <laughs> Linus my poet. Alanis <laughs> my poet. My wet. poet. <laughs> Alanis, my poet's wet. <laughs> and you guys have like this thing called um, is it is a poutine? Poutine, yeah. Poutine. Yeah. So we could like we could turn something nice, something vulgar into something nice and we could be calling each other putting in a mall right putting putting in a mall i like it's, that it's the poutine that your mom makes yeah that's it putin so what's what's putting again like it's a uh, fr- french fries which is chips here mm-hmm. yeah. uh with uh cheese curds and gravy oh, so it's really yeah really and burn. hard and heart attack and high blood <laughs> yeah. So if someone, if you yell at putang and then someone says what? You say, no, 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 no. Hey, putin and amo. Putin and amo. Did, did you want some putin inside you? Mm, yeah. And more. Yeah. Yeah. And then we also have um, Justin Bieber, mm. and I wanted to name him Justin Viva Max. Mm. <laughs> so shout outs to people who watch Viva Max, you dirty motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> And shout outs to the Viva Hot Babes back in the day. It's oh my the, God, Viva, yeah. So that's, or you can call him Justin Bieber. It's the Filipino way of saying Viva. So, and that was my list of Canadian things or slash people if they were Filipino. Nice. I have to throw in one of them because those ones get the views. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah I like that. And since you're Canadian, I was like, I had to look up Canadian things. Like, oh, I didn't know they were Canadian. Well, like, yeah, so. Jim Carrey's Canadian too. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So Jim Carrey, Carrey. Yeah. Jim Carrey, Carrey. Justin Trudeau is Justin Tarantado. Like, wow. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> Very political. <laughs> <laughs> Free Palestine. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the first oh, time we said it on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, dude. Good on us, man. <laughs> <laughs> right after talking shit about this prime minister. <laughs> <laughs> we never get political. Yeah. This, you know, yeah, that's thing. What's Drake then? What's the weekend? The weekend? Uh, uh, Easter so- Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> It's Good uh, Friday to Easter it's Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Go to church. <laughs> oh, go to church. The weekends go to church. <laughs> church time. Sabado lingo is what Sabado, Sabado, Sabado lingo. lingo. Sabado and lingo. <laughs> the weekend. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so Drake, yeah, man. Drake. Oh um, there was. Do you have a story of why you came to Australia, right? 
Okay. Oh, yeah. So, let's do this. I didn't hear it. I, these guys heard it, so I, I haven't heard the story yet. Okay, so uh, I was in two... Okay, I was in a country. I was uh, in Malaysia, and I was gonna... I had to take a flight to another country from Malaysia, right? Let's just say... Should we beep this? No, we can't. Whatever. Whichever you want, you can censor it yourself, or if you want, I can censor you it You censor it, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, I'm in... Oh. I have a flight to as I go to the gate and they're like your flight is d delayed for an hour finally I got to the show oh, that's <laughs> nice yeah, that's yeah. Right. so into the podcast that's a roller coaster <laughs> ride man it was it was like up and down it was like it, the emotions I felt was worth the, the show we did yesterday yeah, yeah. like yeah, everything came down to that point I was like this was all worth it yeah, right, right, right. yeah for that jacket <laughs> I almost feel bad now. And I, like, maybe I could just give it away. <laughs> so that's it. That's, that's, fine. that story yeah, may or may not be included in this episode, but you'll never know if it's right. not included. Hey, this might be a long beep. <laughs> can I try that that one on? Which one? Yeah. 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 Why not? Why not? Why not? Let's do it. You've been through Let a lot, bro. <laughs> so, so yeah, you can't context. say no after that story. After that, yeah. Raph, you gotta like, you know. So for context, this guy went at the through. show, Ron was wearing a denim jacket and Raph was wearing a denim oh jacket. They swapped. they swapped jackets. It was, a, it was a moment. We've got it on vlog. Yeah, we've got it. We, so watch, hey. our, watch our latest vlog and you'll see it. It'll come out soon. You gotta model it. There's a mirror over there. There's mirrors over there. <laughs> I'm too sexy for this hey, jacket. Hey. Too sexy for looks, this jacket. It's pretty good on him, man. <laughs> <laughs> too big or not too big? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks like a gay on you, bro. It's, like like that. it's an actual. <laughs> what is it? A jean gi. <laughs> <laughs> it's a jean jacket. Jean gi. gi. <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna tie oh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta roll up the sleeves. You gotta roll up the sleeves. Yeah. Or, like you're in a go, or you just do like what I do, just take the sex sleeves off. Ah, <laughs> oh, bro, not with these ones. <laughs> oh, these ones, bro. <laughs> Fan of denim. Oh man, I'm so glad I told the story. Hey, yeah, man. But yeah, thank you for making it to the show. Bro. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, we yeah, absolutely appreciate you being here. Uh, I think that's yeah, it's. Got disconnected. Oh, it's connected. It's connected yeah. to the extension. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the extension. Uh, <laughs> so many wires. Wait, it's just there. This one right here. That was an awkward position. <laughs> Boom. All right. There we go. Hey, man. Again, thanks for having me, man. That was so much fun. Of course. Bro. Man. Uh, thank yep. you for the show last night. We had a yeah. great time. We had a blast. And. Thank you for coming to, to the podcast, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. And I hope to do this again. Yeah. And, uh, you know, next year, I'll definitely do another show yeah, closer yeah, to, yeah. you said the, the Black City or whatever? Yeah, Black yeah, Town? Black 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 yeah, the Black City. Yeah, yeah. Black City. Yeah, that's, <laughs> Black, it's not Black Detroit. City, which, <laughs> bro, Dude, you, this area is, is our area. It, this right is where yeah. you got to do well, the show. Let's do it next time. Do it here. Sure. Hey, man. Yeah. Yeah. We can literally do it here. I'm down. We can do something. Don's going to open for you, apparently. Hey, man. You're down? He's going to be an opener and bodyguard at the same time. I'm going to open my tight five. I really have to. Awesome, man. And his tight shoulders as well. And tight poet. You got to loosen up. Oh, man. I heard from the Jiu Jitsu guys, <laughs> <laughs> you can't get into his ass. Huh? <laughs> He's so tight, my friend. You tried the triangle, he put his face even further in your crotch. That's a great Something's Brazilian wrong with him. That's a great Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> man. Uh, at, at, at the same time, man, thank you for representing Filipinos. Uh, Fuck, I'm like, so proud to 100%. be, and I, I only care about representing. That's my whole goal. Yeah. That's, that's, I, that's it. Yeah, yeah. fuck Hollywood, and, fuck everything yeah. else. I just do, I do this for the people. Yeah, love it. Yeah. Oh yes. Well, let us know next time you come to Australia. We'd love to have you on the show again. Cool, because yeah. my visa expires, so I have to stay for another month. <laughs> 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 Some shit's gonna happen. Like, yeah. uh, he literally fun. walked in. Is like, can you live in here? I was like, like, dude, I'd be right there. <laughs> you got everything you need here. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. fucking amazing. You got everything, bro. Yeah. So oh, if yeah. you need a hideout, you can hide. Hey, hide I can't here, wait bro. to be in trouble by the law again. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know what? You you THC it. butter is not going to get you in trouble on the way in. No. It's a fucking apple on the way oh, in that's from right. yeah, someplace else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They'll yeah. hammer you like They're a... With that. You, you bring... Uh, nowadays, if you go to the Philippines, and it used to be if you bring pulverone mm. into Australia, they'll confiscate it. 
Now that's fine because milk products is fine now. Mm, it's but if, it, it's 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 like chicharron stuff, really? right? Like pork products, right? That's why we, I couldn't get any actual pork chicharron. Oh, they had the fake one. Yeah, that to get mm. the fake one. Yeah, you bring in a banana from Thailand. You end up on a TV show called Border Patrol. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're trying yeah, to fight your way it. out of that. <laughs> <laughs> His plate's too tight for this banana. <laughs> <laughs> and he needs a point bit. that's sucking. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. There we go. On that, <laughs> <laughs> on that note. On that note. All right. This is the part of the show we call the Cheat Code Stash, where we nominate a song that we've been jamming from last week, this week, or something in the future, or something local or global. Mm. We like to showcase music because music makes the world go round. We always start with Don doing stuff. So since he's wearing his shirt tucked in, we shall do it again first. Let's so, go. what song do you want to nominate on the cheat code stash, Mister Don? Doing stuff. Uh, I'm gonna shout out to a local Sydney artist um, or Australian artist, by the way. Uh, they go by the name Mari, and this is their Triple J Bars of Steel track uh, that they just released. Bars of Steel uh, the track on that. Mm. Hey, look it up on Spotify. Mari M A R I dot. Hey, that's blazing. What song you want to nominate yeah, on the Chico so Stash? I've got to apologize to Don because you did mention the TV show, The Gentleman, and I was roasting it. It's actually a pretty good TV series. <laughs> it's <all right>. it's <laughs> so I finished the first season. It's pretty good. Anyway, this track's from it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a UK uh, rapper by the name of A Star yeah. from Liverpool, and it's called. He's a Liverpudlian. He's from Liverpool. From so Liverpool. In this Liverpool. cop dash. Uh, sim- simple and effective. Yeah. Message. All right, Garcia, what song you want to nominate on the Chico to Stash? Uh, it's, it's called Mildred by Norman Stan. I never heard of this artist before last week. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Hey. Everyone's going hip hop today. Eh? This one sounds like old, old, uh, old school. It's not drill. I went tuna. Universal with the mm. audio onto an Apollo. It's got a good I spit though. oxy, that's a hard pill to swallow. Used Ooh. to take you get to all the way to El Dorado. But what's no gold where I was at? Yeah, wrestle with my demons. Like we on the mat. Goliath on his back. <laughs> Melatonin slingshot made him take a nap. When they hear me rap, that's they like who's that? Can you believe it? Yeah. Yeah. They just wanna hit the lyrics. I'm crazy yeah. like mommy dearest been shot. They barely hear us. You feel it? Yeah, he's cadence. Like I'm the realest now. I'm in your office like I'm the realest now. I'm in your office like I'm the realest now. Lyrical syphilis, oh, yeah. I'm gonna bring the sickness right to where you're living. This is, is that it? new flavor Norman in your Stan? ear. Can you hear okay. it? I Call like me it. Pete yeah, Rose, like everything hidden. Yeah, this for the women yeah. named Mildred. Out here in Kentucky with a plate of fried chicken. I'm swerving to the derby on my way to make a million. Black eyed peas, baby, yeah, I got a feeling. It's lights, yeah. camera, action when I walk inside the Sounds building. Sick, right? I got so many bars, I could probably build a prison. Flow hotter than the devil. Yeah. It's the type of music I like to blast around this area to so like scare some white people. Just yeah. play that in my car. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you have a song you want to nominate on this on the Chico's podcast? Any song um, you've been feeling? Let me. Uh, you know what? Uh, Twenty seconds in. Yeah, Drake. Drake. I got to. I got to rap. 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 I got to hey, rap Toronto. Hey, I got to rap hey, the, the six. Hey. Uh, it would be uh, the too sexy song. Twenty seconds in. Because they talk for twenty seconds. Cause, just because of the video clip you mentioned. Yeah, <laughs> it's the video clip. I want to hear the song. Then mm. I'm gonna watch the video. It's way too sexy, right? Way yeah. too sexy by yeah. Drake, Future, and Young. So I 20 seconds in. On the video or the, on Spotify? On the video. Too oh. sexy for this show. <laughs> <laughs> slide in his DM. Wait, what's she her name? Slide, what's slide. I don't know, but she had a tiny skirt and she was just really cool. Oh. So check it out. Oh, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, I know, I know which one. Uh, we'll talk about it. Later. <laughs> <laughs> Please talk it up. Talk about it later. All right, so I'm gonna nominate. What song shall I put on? If we find out tomorrow that Ron's got problems leaving the country, we know what happened. <laughs> That's right. I'm problems. stuck here for 20 days, bro. <laughs> this time you Four know. Filipinos got pregnant. All <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, because my passport was bent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is <laughs> "Ain't No Stopping Us Now" by McFadden. <laughs> <laughs> what a mix! <laughs> Greatest mix of all time. Ain't no stopping me now. <laughs> but you gotta stop. <laughs> stop, please. You gotta stop this. I came like five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you once again, Ron. Just so thanks so much. Man. Thanks, you guys. Hopefully, we'll see you next time on the Chico's Heck podcast. Yes. Hopefully, we we'll see you in another show. And man, hello. You have a great time. We just do like half yearly stuff, right? Like half year around the world and half year back. Yeah. When yeah. do you go back home again? 
Uh, I'm back in June. Ah, cool, okay. cool, cool. So, so you spend Christmas and then once yeah. that's all done, so like hey. January to June hey. or May, end of May. Right. Over to we got We got to go out. To yeah, yeah, we're gonna out say Canada, yeah. we want to go out. To Canada. Are, Are you based? Go you're based in Canada right now? Or in LA. LA. Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll go, go to, to LA. We gotta get LA. Yeah. All right. We gotta get LA, bro. All right. So where can they find you? Uh, IG at Ron Jossel one, uh, TikTok at Ron Jossel, and Facebook. Do people still do that? Ron Jossel. So that's, <laughs> that's it. All Just, that's are where all the titas are. Oh, I, still, I need titas, some tita bro. love, man. Tita. That's it, bro. Yeah. Tita love. I want some. I want some tita to make some good champorado. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> and where can they find you? In, um, don't doing stuff www.dondoingstuff.com that's my website at dondoingstuff on all socials hey where can they find you Garcia um it's Christian Wild Thought on Instagram or um come check out our YouTube man our episode 2 of Boom Sarabs Were Up yeah. is out go and run that up man so, mm. barbecue sticks so and cheap, everything yeah Cheat Codes podcast that's on it. YouTube episode 2 and then a future yeah. episode we're gonna try and find the alternative to Jollibee in Sydney yeah Jollibee's yeah. still coming here because yeah. Jollibee's not gonna come here bro don't worry no. about Jollibee. They're, not, they're giving up on Australia yeah. we're challenging that and where can they find you Nats Blazin Nats Blazin on Instagram yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> and you can find yes. me Raph Flores with a Z on Instagram or Raph Flores with an S dot com so anything to do with your video needs visual needs anything that um, need a video wedding videos corporate videos music videos hit up hyperlbrand.com or rafflores.com mm. and where can they find the cheat coders the, the cheat coders. Coders. Hey, and you can find the merch there really soon we're gonna try and figure out how to get you more efficient and get our merch in our, on our website and where and where they can where can they support us on patreon the patreon.com Patreon. forward slash the cheat coders hey and you have now listened to another episode oh, of the cheat coders <laughs> <laughs> NK